uh, like I said, we're going to get into this Upchurch interview today. Uh, this is by Southwind. Southwind is a reaction channel on YouTube. We Make sure you go show him some support. He's up to uh, 6,000 subscribers now, and I think he was only at 1,000 or something uh, before. So this video is definitely helping him get some traction, which is fantastic, uh, which is one reason we support Upchurch, because he's a real one. He's definitely a real one. I know recently after I started my reaction channel, um, probably within my first month, Ryan Upchurch shared one of my reaction videos on his uh, community page and uh, really did me a solid, got me a, uh, a nice bump in followers, got me some attention, and I think that video is uh, still my highest uh, viewed video. It's like at 30 or 40,000 uh, views or something. So Ryan's a real one. Um... Uh, we always uh, supported him. I've been watching his music for probably about five years. Uh, he's the only reason I listen to country music at all. Uh, until I found Upchurch and became a fan of him, I basically, I mean, hated country music. It was my father's music. It was not something I wanted to listen to. It gave me a headache. Um, I, I couldn't. I just couldn't get on board. But... Uh, Upchurch, you know, he uh, he drizzles it in to his other music. And um, he also does country music in a different way. He obviously has like some traditional, you know, what you would, when you think of country music, he has some traditional music songs like that. But he also has his own style. Um... So I guess you could say he does a, uh, he does rap, he does country, he does rock, and then he does upchurch. He makes a certain style of music, which is a sweet blend of uh, rock, or I guess some rock, but sweet blend of mainly rap and country. But he does it in a way that is very unique. It sounds very authentic. Um... But, yeah. Alright, so I'll stop rambling. And we're going to get into this Upchurch Ryan Official full interview at Ghost Ranch. This is the Skint Review at Ghost Ranch um, on YouTube. What's the YouTuber's name? Let's not forget. Let's give him another shout out. Uh, Southwind on YouTube. So make sure you go subscribe to Southwind's page on YouTube. He is the lucky guy that uh, landed this exclusive interview. So let's head over to Ghost Ranch and uh, find out what's going on over there. Rated R for redneck, L for lack of maturity. Okay. Look, you see that Fanta can? Mm -hmm. Somebody gonna be online later. Hey, there was a PO bottle in the fucking interview video. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, this is Southwind. Thank each and every one of you for coming and checking out this interview. The interview starts out hilarious and funny, but then it goes crazy deep questions and things that you don't want to miss. So you're going to have to watch the whole thing. Not to mention Upchurch plays two exclusive songs, which he's oh. never released anywhere ever. The only time you're going to hear him is in this interview. Let's hold it down for him. Watch no this, shit. share this, listen to his music. Let's go. Okay, so that's a, that's kind of a, a special surprise. Two exclusive songs are going to be played during this interview that he's never released. I don't know if there's songs he's going to release in the future, or if these are literally two, you know, private songs of his that he only sings for people. Uh, interesting. But that's kind of a nice bonus. Go! I just want to start the interview off by saying, thank you, Ryan Upchurch, for having me in your, your house. I'll do no problem, bro. Thank you for the opportunity. A year ago, guys, I was in a municipal auditorium 
watching this guy on stage in the crowd, just one of you, and now I'm chilling at Goes Ranch. What do you think about the show? Dude. Oh, bro. Did you like it? Fun fact. Fun fact, real quick. We actually, I played bass in a band a long time ago, and we played a couple of shows, opened a couple at Cliffy's Birthday Bash. Ah. With Dustin Spears. With Coots. With Coots, yes. Yep. Yeah. And so I played bass. And so the show, now it was awesome back then. That was back when I sucked, bro. <laughs> no, I didn't lie to you, bro. I sucked back then. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. No. No, no way, no I'll way. Be, I but don't think but uh, out. the show back then was awesome. Don't get me wrong, but the show at the municipal, different. Huh? Oh my gosh, bro! That thing behind uh, Jason. Mm-hmm. The, but, oh, dude, the, the the video, the 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 big screen, the barn, mm-hmm. the barn. Was that really a barn from? Dude, so all that stuff is everything you seen that night was an idea that B. Loose had, and Deerdorf. And Billy helped him build it. That's so sick, bro. Bro, three people. Really? Yeah. That's. I thought it was like a. You would think it was a professional crew, bro. You bro. Know what I'm saying? Three people, bro, from the backwoods and one from Texas. That's amazing. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say, guys, you know, if you have a dream out there, if you have something you love to do, just keep doing it. Get better at it. Hone your craft, and you never know. You may be giving an interview with the King of Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, hey, also, can I add something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you have to believe in yourself 100%, not 99.9. 99.9 don't work. 100 works. Go into it head first. Head Thanks. first. So, um, and I also wanted to say this is for Creek Squad, not just me. Not me to forget any, to get any, oh, look at me, you know. Everyone this look is, at him. <laughs> this, is Creek, this is for Creek Squad, too, so. This is for everybody out there. I appreciate. I want to say I appreciate you coming out and doing this, bro. This is the Dude. bro. You no, know, it's as crazy as it sounds, bro. All the good interviews are coming from independent people who want to do interviews and podcasts, bro. <laughs> like otherwise, it's just some PRS questions that have to be gone through at first, and yeah, like, right, this one right. X'd out. Not about this. You know what I mean? Right, right. You know how it is, bro. You're from around here. I know exactly how it is, and anybody who's been involved in the music industry knows how it is for a long time and it's ge- generic and it's hey you got to say this hey you can't say this and it's just it, it, bro, we're tired the, of it bro when's the last time you heard about somebody from around here bro getting big besides right. recently right exactly um a long time a long time <laughs> a long time there's a lot of people that come in from cali i, I put even put a song out about not too long ago Hired uh, some people hire their writing staff from California. Hey, uh huh. Oh, bro, you can hear it. Yeah, if you're from here, you can hear it. Yeah, absolutely. If you're from the south, if you're from the south, you can hear it. And it, it, it's a shame when most of these dudes ain't never been on the farm or through some hay before, Mm-mm. you know, but they're out here and uh, talking about John Deere. Oh my god, it's always a John Deere, ain't it? It, 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 it is. And I love John Deere, don't get me wrong, but it's like, <laughs> but it's just like, I got one too, I can't lie. <laughs> It's just the inauthenticity. Oh, yeah. It, it, that's just, it, it's too much, man. But anyways, um, okay, so I'm going to start off with just some, like, basic questions. Just yeah. some fun questions, For small sure. questions. First question, uh, actually, I'm sorry, this is a very serious question. How many dog beers does it take to get the scuffs off of, on beans? Exactly 11 five and a half. <laughs> Write that 11 down. Last one, you have to drink it standing on your head. 11 to 5 times, I guess, 7 to the... Okay. She could probably do the math <laughs> in animals. <laughs> she, she, she'll, she can do that math. That's the, um, not to be controversial, but man, we got 11. So if you guys didn't know what what's going on there, that's kind of like a little inside joke about Katie Noel, which is a trash-ass fake rapper and chick uh who tried to fuck over up church back in the day um so it's kind of a rolling joke within creek squad to bag on this dumb bitch we gotta laugh right oh for sure i was actually thinking you were gonna mention that so i thought about going and getting some pork and beans in a sanding block and just sitting here and sanding the beans kind of scuffing the tad bit (laughs) dude that's a prop dude oh man that would have been uh I've lost it, man. So, all right. So, second unserious question. 
O'Reilly's or AutoZone? O'Reilly's. O'Reilly's. Every time. Every time. O'Reilly's Auto Parts. I was Sponsor just going to sing jingle too. <laughs> Sponsor me, O'Reilly's. Yeah, give me a call. Hey, get... If you had to pick one car out of your collection and you couldn't drive anything else for one year, what would you pick? 2014 Mustang. Mustang. Yeah. Easy. 2014 Mustang. Because I know it like the back of my hand. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I, you know, my first car was a Camaro. What year? And 94. Oh, hell yeah. And it had like round tops. Yeah, like the, the kind of like the weird point. Yeah. yeah. But like, um, it had T-tops and I, I was, it was a stick, bro. I gotta look it up now. I don't know if that's the uh, the. Or maybe I'm like, wrong. I wonder if it's like the '91. Or let me look real quick. It was a, it was a weird the weird one with the pointy. I think I know exactly which one you're talking about. It it looks aerodynamic as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> and bro, I had a stick shift and the t tops. Oh yeah, bro. My buddy had one of them. Oh, the oh you wanna see? Yeah. No, you're good. It's yeah. this one right here, ain't it? Yep, yep, right there. Yeah, right. man, they were cool. I had the red, yeah, the red one too. T tops. Yeah, that was uh, a lot of cool shit went down that car. So. Crack. Life's like an empty canvas. Even you paint it with blood. All right, so car question. Uh, let's see. I don't want to ask this, but ask I'm going to ask this. Ask Why does Chase and Matthews have the same melody in every song he's ever sung? One word, mainstream. <sighs> I mean, dude, I mean, come mic, on, bro. Mic drop. This is, this is like, this is not me being mean mainstream. or wanting to throw shade. I, you know, it is what it is. I got my own shit going on, but look at, how long has he been with them? Not long, right? No. Or actually, maybe like a year. Close. Close? It sounds so. like he now listen, I'm everybody knows, everybody watching knows. Your boy got girl problems, bro. I've always had girl problems. It is what it is. It's what happens when this is your lifestyle. But him being with them, the songs he's done, it already sounds like he had thirty girlfriends. Every right. song is about a girl, bro. Yes. Why? And, to, well You know what I mean? You know, to me honestly. I know that. I know no, it's like y'all are amazing. <laughs> right. Y'all are worth writing songs over. But, you know, a lot of people, man, they're just simple. Yeah. And then some people, they are creative. And that's what an artist to me is. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't want to dog anybody. Sorry, not sorry. Dog beer, anybody. But, <laughs> but some people are artists, and some yeah. people aren't, man. Well, somebody told me recently, and it really stuck with me. She said, some people pay for it, and some people don't have to pay for it. Oh, wow. And I was like, damn, that is so true. Because you think about, you know, let's talk about love songs for a second. If it's something like Shenandoah, Two Dozen Roses. Right, right, right. Then that, I don't know, I feel like the song has substance, you know? I feel like a lot of these songs now aimed towards girls are uh, for the Nashville female tourists. To listen to. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Instead of one in particular woman. And that a few other women can compare to this. They try to compare to all females instead of this specific female and make a song about that specific female. But that's exactly a mainstream issue right there. It's the um, the need for mass appeal. And what actually appeals to people, especially with music, is a song written so personal for one individual, but like you said, other people can relate to it and see themselves in the song. That's what resonates with people. Not trying to make a fluff piece that everybody likes. Or everybody, you know, has a some kind of connection to. Absolutely. And also... The song from Shenandoah, just out of all the, the music in Nashville that's been put out in the past 10 years, have you ever heard a song like the Shenandoah one? You can just hear it's different. Oh, yeah, like uh, Clay Walker, Neon Moon, or wait. Uh, Love Clay Walker. Love Clay, Walker. Uh, Clay Walker, what is that song called? Uh, she knew she called my eye. What is it? Uh, oh, um, you I know exactly what you're talking about. You better hide your heart. Yeah, like yeah. stuff like that, man. Yeah. That's the good stuff. And you can just hear it. You can hear the difference and you can hear it. But uh, well, that, that'll bring me to one of my other questions. Okay. How was it like working with Clay Walker? 
He's one of the realest fucking artists I've ever met. No way. I'm not even capping, bro. He is insanely genuine. Don't get it twisted, bro. He's a, He is a country boy, bro. If he don't like something you're doing, oh, he's going to call you out. <laughs> but he is... I don't know, man. When I when I met him, you know, because I met a lot of people, and you set these expectations, and usually 90% of the time, they are under the expectation. A lot of people that I grew up on, I've met them, and I've been like, man, you're a fucking asshole. Right, right, right. I just want to, I just only want to listen to your music from now on. Right, right. You know, and even people who've done me wrong, I mean, I still listen to their stuff because I can separate the music from the personal stuff, you know? So everybody I, has a bad day, but yeah, if there's if there's a pattern of this behavior, right? You know, and um, you know, with Clay, I got to his house uh, when I got there. He was training a horse, <laughs> you know. So he really does. It. Oh, bro, yes, he took me on a four wheeler, or he gave me a four wheeler. He jumped on a four wheeler. A bunch of us did. He showed me his chicken coops and his woods and stuff. And then, but that's a thing. A lot of these motherfuckers want want you to come to them, but they don't want to come to you. He come to my house to shoot the uh, uh, the video we did for a little uh, a little while. Yeah, yeah. And we got drunk and drove my platinum <laughs> through the fucking woods. Almost got stuck. Almost drove in a pond. <laughs> Had a damn good time. And I, I'm not gonna say who, but you know somebody that was uh, with him in his camp was telling him not to do stuff and he was like shut your mouth I can do what I want right. and I was like yo this dude I want to be like that guy real respectful nice family great to his wife great to his kids bro he, he has a, a mini like church in his house where he goes every morning and prays really yes bro like he he is a in my book he's, he's not the number one best dude I've ever met that is exactly what he says he is that's okay, crazy so and you know what that, that real it's one. crazy that the old the older guys from Nashville have to be that yeah, you know what I'm saying. But they are. That's that's and that's one of the changes. If I was going to say that's a change, like from these other dudes who come out and shoot a video, they probably right. have 15 managers and you know all this other stuff, and they're mm -hmm. trying to you know tell them not what to do, like you said. Clay, Clay's man. Boss. So Clay's just a real does what he wants to do, bro. When you pull up to his house, you think you think the country boy mafia lived there, bro? <laughs> He's got every all his workers like him. They're all you know wearing the same shirt with the collar on it and shit, you know, doing his cars, his landscaping, like helping him do everything and they just, they all love him and that's what I aspire to be one day, you know. When I seen that, him and Kid Rock, when I seen, Kid met Rock. them two, I was like, that's what I want to be when I'm older, their age. Kid Rock. Man, that's, uh, yeah, it's something to look up to, bro. Mm -hmm. right? And, uh, dude, you, to me, you're, you're in those shoes. You know, Dude, thank you, bro. And, you're, and you are you are doing it the right way. Thank you, man. And, I appreciate and, that. And man, that's what draws me to like. I could yeah, I haven't listened to radio in freaking ten years, bro. bro it's eighty percent commercials. It is, and it's just lame, bro. Bro, it is. It's just, I painted that room in there, the, or I started painting that room the other day, the one I showed you a minute ago. By the time I'd done painted that one wall, I've heard the same song, no shit, three times. But it was only like seven songs that I heard three times each. Yeah. Over and over. I was like, God dang, bro, there's more people than this. Right, right. And that's 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 one of the huge disconnects. That these old guys, Kid Rock, yeah. you know, um, when she was playing, they were all playing on the radio, but they, Kid Rock played, they're about it, they're genuine, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That was one of my questions, because... I was raised on 90s country, you know what I'm saying? So. Oh, bro, you ain't never got a second guess Clay Walker or Kid Rock, bro. Kid Rock is an actual bad motherfucker in real life, bro. Really? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, did you see his uh, old Bud Light commercial? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, that, but I mean, like, on personal time. Yeah. Like, when nobody's filming, bro, he's still the baddest motherfucker in the room, and he ain't scared of nobody, bro. Damn. Nobody. I, I mean, I, I can... Well, let's, let's go ahead and do this question, then. Okay. What is it like... To meet Kid Rock because one of my yeah, Leslie on Twitch. Yep, this is the Upchurch interview. We're like 15 minutes in. We're gonna watch the whole thing today. I've had this on the watch later and been stalling, so I'm finally getting to it. I have seen the documentary. Uh, very well done. Uh, I kind of wish I hadn't seen it so we could do a reaction to it also. But yeah, this is uh, 
What's cool about seeing Upchurch in an interview is he Upchurch is just Upchurch, you know what I mean? If you see him on his videos or if you see him on somebody else's Instagram when they caught him in public or he's always the same dude. So that's nice to see. Personal favorite when I was a kid, bro, that CD, Devil Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. I got in so much trouble from getting that CD. I had people like buying for me. Black and white CD with the, yeah. the rings on? Yeah. yeah, dude. That was my anthem when I was a kid. I was a little, I was a little rebel, you know, and my mm -hmm. mom, my mom would catch it in my drawer or something, you know. What are you doing? You that was me with Eminem, bro. Yeah. My mom, Eminem. She, she found that fucking Eminem cassette tape and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, bro, my friend Jordan gave it to me as a fourth grade. Yeah, fourth grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Kid Rock, man, he's a he's a good guy. He is in love with music, bro. And like I've I've been to Kid Rock's parties he has, and I have spent one on one personal time with Kid Rock. Like one night he called me, he's That'd like, hey, awesome. he's like, come to my house. I was like, all right. And it was it was pretty late. You know, I get in my car, I go over there. I can't get in the gate, so he he you know has this guy pop out of the woods, you know, open the gate. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I get up there to his studio or whatever, and we're just chilling. And dude, it's his studio, bro. Oh my god, it's state of the art. Yeah, uh, you're talking six, seven digits. You know what I mean? Jeez, and nice. It's in this studio, moose hanging everywhere, all kind of shit, bro. The next room over, he has millions of dollars worth of cars that belong to people who are legendary in country music. Wow. You know, just sitting there. He's got Waylon Jennings cars. He's got Jesse James oh, four wheels. Oh, he's actually their old cars. Oh yeah, he's got Hank. He's, he's got one of Hank Senior's cars. Dude, he is a he loves music, bro. He tells his life. He's a and kind I watched of this man. We went upstairs one time. This is the time I'm talking about when he called me over there. We go upstairs. He turns on the turntables, gets a damn vinyl out, and starts you know <laughs> doing the old school shit. Then he'll jump on a guitar. Then I'll jump on the drums, and I'm like, man, dude. So he can play This it motherfucker is a for real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. He can do I've, I've heard stories that he could. I think I think I saw a video, like, years ago, one of his shows, and he was playing the drums. Oh, yeah. You know? that's, he can do it all, bro. And see, man, that, that's that's another thing to me. Um, nowadays, you got these people who, they see a person, um, the, the labels in Nashville, they see a person, hey, that kid looks good, or whatever, he's skinny, and he's got a six-pack. Let's put him out there. He can't play nothing. He can't see nothing. You know, he can't. We'll make him do it. Yeah, we'll, we're, he can't. He can't do anything. But we'll uh, we'll make money off of him. And like Kid Rock can play. You can play. How many instruments? I can play. Uh, I can play what I need to of the guitar. Um, for like what I want my song to be structured like and stuff. Some of my song. Some of my songs I can play the whole song. Uh, but mostly I'm just I'm infatuated with lyrics. Right, right, Lyrics right. is my favorite thing about music. It, it yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that Upchurch plays a bunch of instruments like that. I know that he can um, pick at the guitar, but um, yeah, instruments is not his thing. Lyrically, though, this fucking guy, bro, he can write like a hundred songs a day. It's crazy how fast he writes a song. Is what are the lyrics saying? Is it true? You know, do you really mean that? Are you gonna stand behind exactly what you just said in public? And that's another thing, bro. We're coming to a point in age now where slick outlaw country is coming back. So yeah. check this. What happens in the long run when you got ten outlaw country singers who really don't give a fuck roaming around downtown Nashville and bumping into these other guys? You know what I mean? Man, then what's gonna happen? Somebody's story's not gonna be real. Maybe it's or, gonna it's, it's gonna be bad. It's, oh yeah, it's gonna be bad. And it, it's just <sighs> real outlaws, man. It was the way of the old, and uh, like you said, it's coming back because people like uh, who, who was it, uh, uh, Cody Jeeks and people yeah. like that. They don't play them on the radio. No, Tyler Childers mm -mm. They don't play them on the radio. That's ragweed. But I don't know why. Right. Why well, wouldn't you? Because they can't, bro. Because let's think about this. I thought about doing a challenge one time. Yeah. I was like, I was sitting on my couch and I was like, what is up with all these fucking birthday cake ass fucking country singers, bro? Like, I, I've, I've already met half of them and they're not, they're not like us. Like, 
I'm not. It, you ain't even got to be specific. They're just not like us. They they don't do anything like we do. Like you can just tell they're like the preppy rich kid in school. A lot right. of them. Right. Now I can't speak for all of them. Right. But most of them I've met personally have ended up like the preppy kid in school where you couldn't sit at his lunch table. Right. And, and I don't really want to bring them up. But go ahead. Sure. No. No. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to really bring them up, but I've never really got to say this anywhere. You know. I got mad at Morgan Wallen for good old boy reasons in the top of Aldine's that night. And by the way, uh, rest in peace to a little buddy that uh, passed out or that uh, died on the roof that night, man. Oh, wow. uh, You ever heard about this? I didn't hear about that. I, I know that y'all had like a thing. Okay, yeah. so we get there, whatever. We're on top of Aldine's. Morgan's already texting me. Like, hey, man, what are you doing tonight? Whatever. And I said, well, uh, I said, well, I'm going to Aldine's. And then... He read my message and didn't text back. Mm. You know, which was cool. Fuck it, whatever. I'm downtown here. Whatever it is, what it is. All right. So we get there, and then uh, the DJ is like, "Hey, bro, uh, Morgan's in the back." And I was like, "Okay, well, that's cool. I'm just out here doing my thing, or whatever." Well, then I was like, "Hey, Chase, you know, for hospitality reasons, uh, take him a uh, take him a beer because if I go over there, I'm gonna drag all these people to his security, and I don't want them to, you know, right. I don't want to be an issue." Right. Chase goes over there. Blonde headed lady comes up. We are not having this tonight. And Chase is like, whoa, whoa. He's like, a church just wanted to give him. No, y'all are not being seen with each other. I was like, what? Bro. Oh, no. He stayed in the back green room the entire time and. Not being seen together. But in the same breath, he's like, hey, bro, what's up? And I'm like, dude, listen, man. I don't, nobody is too famous. You can control if, if you're really about some shit. You can go out there and control a crowd, bro. If people smoking you, be like, "Hey, man, back up!" They're right? Gonna, they're right. gonna be like, "Okay." They're gonna listen to you. It's right. just it's normal people shit. Like, but it was just too, it was some weird shit. And like, and I didn't I didn't care that he didn't come out. I ain't trying to sound like a diva. But when you're texting me asking me where I'm at, and I say I'm in Aldine's, and you're in Aldine's, and then you hide in the back, and then some lady's like, "No, you're not being seen with each other." If somebody did that to me, I'd be like, "Hey, lady." I've been Shut talking your to them. damn mouth. That's my decision. Type yeah, that's, shit. And that's, that's another definitely, uh, Clay suspect. Walker thing. Real, hey, you know, and, and I don't, I'm not going to throw anybody on the bus, you know. That's the other issue, though, with mainstream artists is they got PR people and managers who are trying to, you know, manage their persona and make sure everybody that watches them feels a certain way. They're trying to manage everybody's feelings. And Upchurch is just a fucking real one, bro. Feel how you're going to feel. It is what it is. I mean, I, I like I like some of Morgan's music or whatever. Me but, too. But um, I like his new album. Do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard it yet. I've heard some of it, but what, it was 30-something 30, 30 songs? Bro, it's a lot. I yeah. haven't listened to all of it, but I listened to the song called Keith Whitley. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, I love Keith Whitley. Mm -hmm. um, um, gotta love Keith Whitley, man. But, so, like, and that's another thing... It's like, you know, Morgan's a real dude. I feel like Morgan's a real dude. But is it is it is it a public there's a disconnect. Is it a publicist thing? Like y'all can't be I think so. Yeah. Exactly. Honestly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I feel like he's a real dude. You right. know what I mean? All right. And if and if you saw him out somewhere, he'd probably be like, yo, whatever, bro. So it's like a publicist thing. It's like a weird Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean he's gotta please thirty people. Right. Exactly. I gotta please myself. Exactly. You know what I mean? And that's the thing though. These people who listen to our music, bro, they want a personal connection. Why not give it to them? Right. It's one of the most important things. Right? I mean, in a world where every artist you meet, a lot of them, or I can't say every, but where 90% of people, I feel, personally I feel, meet who they idolize and they end up being not what they want and they Why end up being... Us? Like mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. was it it's kind of, oh yeah. I met people that idolize and so far there's some white. that's why, yeah. yeah. But like, have you guys ever met anybody uh, like that? You know, somebody famous or somebody looked up to in some way and then you met them and you were like, yeah, that was a disappointment. I wish I would have kept that, you know, that old way I thought about you. You know, I wish I wouldn't have met you type of thing. <laughs> But it's cool that Ryan Upchurch is consciously thinking of that. 
And he's like, look, if people look up to me and follow me, when they meet me in public, I don't want them to be disappointed. I'm going to do what I can so they're not disappointed. Uh, that conscious effort is part of why uh, we're, we're a fan of UpChurch. I would love to be the guy that people met me and are like, dude, he's exactly what I thought he was. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, bro, especially and in the is. world we're living in, bro, the world sucks right now, bro. If somebody looks up to you, bro, be that for them, you know? Dude, you're changing lives, though, dude. Shit. And, and, and you're They're changing my life, too, you know? And that, you know what? And guys, that, that's that's a huge takeaway in this interview, right? When you're changing lives, that's a huge takeaway. Mm. Ryan's changing lives, and then he said you're changing his lives. So, you know, when when this positivity, I had anxiety disorder really bad years ago in my early 20s, and I realized the power of positivity. Mm -hmm. Dude, and, and you're changing people's lives, and full circle, they're changing your lives. And you're keeping people up, man. Bro, the, char the charging of each other. The charging of Right each other. now, bro, there's a war yeah. going on. Remember when, okay, now look, I'm not trying to get political, bro. I'm not about politics, guys. I'm really not. I'm just quoting something somebody said. Remember when Trump said, we're fighting a war we can't see? Yeah. Energy, dude. Energy. Look at, you can't get on Instagram now without seeing, you know, ass shaking and like violence and stabbing and death, right? Absolutely. That's, that's the devil, bro. That's negative energy. They, yeah, they want you to be negative. These things are made that's for facts. us to be negative. So when you're negative, you're vulnerable. And that's facts. Well, then, then there'll be that little small piece of something that makes money somewhere. It's like, this will make you happy for money. Dude. You know what I mean? That's one of the biggest problems. It is, dude. Yeah. I mean, you're in my house right now. My house is a fucking, it's, it's, I mean, it's clean, but it's down. It's a wreck. But, dude, I'm the happiest motherfucker in the world. I'm fixing it a little bit of time. It's real. It's, if you can tell he lives in it, he's <laughs> not got 50 maids. It's, mm -hmm. dude, it's, up church is everything he says he is. Thank you, man. And uh, it's refreshing, man. It really is. It Thank is. you, bro. Because because money is what everybody is motivated motivated by in the business. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, money's great. It's a good tool. It's a tool. Yeah. It's a useful tool. But but you know, it, it, there's only so much that there's only so much you can do with money physically. But it cannot help you mentally or spiritually. Exactly. Yeah. And right now they're making the tools smaller and the job bigger on purpose. Exactly. So it drives you nuts. There's no reason a gallon of milk should be fucking six dollars, seven dollars, bro. Right. You know why? I mean, and with all the laws against like. So Leslie in the comments on Twitch says the movie U.S. Marshals was filmed over in her county. And from the people in town, say that Wesley Snipes was friendly, but Tommy Lee Jones was an ass. I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. I went off camera for a sec. I had to get me a snack. I don't know if you guys fuck with oatmeal cream pies or not, but holy shit. Those are my favorite. And Robert Downey Jr. was likable and sweet. Yeah, like Upchurch said, it's probably um, 90, 95% are not going to be what you think. There's going to be a handful. There's going to be a handful of real ones. Hey, we got a uh, rumbler. Um, Vince Neal refused to shake uh, We Are The Show's hand. Uh, then when he went on stage, he caught some random girl's panties, and then I felt he might have done me a solid. <laughs> that is facts. That is facts. You never know where the hand's been, bro. You never know where the hand's been. <laughs> it's hard to type here on Twitch. I can't see what I type. Okay. Well, go to Rumble, chick. Go to Rumble. All right, let's get back into the interview. They're burning the milk farms down, and cows are not, uh, they're not living how they're supposed to. Like, that makes bad milk. That makes, you know, bad food. Like, not to mention, dude, come on, bro. I mean, we eat sugar blocks. Everything is a sugar block. Yeah. Carbs you know I mean? and sugar. And, yeah. Sugar yeah. block. It's, man, there's some deep stuff. 
And I try, try not to go into conspiracy. Bro, go bro. into whatever I, you want. I, I have some. I have some deep questions. I'm gonna tell them. Do it, bro. I'm gonna dig them up in a minute. I have, okay. I have okay. I do have one deep question. Yeah. So, and, and I heard about this years ago. And I looked it up, and, and it's true. Um, you said earlier, energy. You used the word energy, right? There was a scientist. I don't remember when he did. He did studies on people who were dying, mm -hmm. right? So on the table, mm -hmm. when they died, their body wound up being 21 or so grams less mm -hmm. right where they died. They don't know where it came from. And they don't know where it came from, you know, um, and the theory is energy was the expelled from the, the body. Soul. So do you believe in a soul? Yes. Bro, I think the world and the universe. Okay, so first off, I want everyone to know this. I do believe in a God. I don't specifically study, nor do I know about any specific religion. I was just literally going to ask that. I was like, um, I don't think I've ever, I've had, I've heard Upchurch speak, speak about like good and evil and right and wrong, that kind of thing. But I've never heard him do what he's to do now and and explain you know his whole religious stance i know that he's not like um a real you know religious religious going to church and everything um uh, don't call me a christian but god is what the world is missing it's a lyric you've had for a minute that's a good bar bro that's a good bar. But yeah, I was just going to say, I, I, I've always been curious on what his religious stance is. You know, me personally, I've been going through my own religious um, whatever for the last few years. My uh, search for God, so to speak. Um, so I'm surprised I never dug into that with, uh, with Upchurch. But definitely what he's doing is uh, positive and for the good, so. That's because in my personal belief, I believe in, my religion is good and bad. And if you don't know the difference in bad, then you're not being good enough. And, right, right. And, like, I know, I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, even people watching this, you know, maybe you, you know, might hone in on one specific religion. And... I, I, I want people to do that if they want to. It's a, it's a free country. We need to keep it a free country. And we don't need to bash anybody else for you know, what religion they believe in. Just let them be and just let them do what they do. But let's just be real, bro. They're trying to get rid of God. They're trying to get rid of, you know, That's believing right. in the higher power. That's what right. the good force would be. That, right. That they think it would be whatever right. it would be. In other words, if there wasn't a Christian God, it would be another good force. They would. A lot of people would try. Mm -hmm. You are your own mind. You're your own person. You do what you do, man. Say it however you want it. And there's another question I had, man, that relates to this. Yeah, take your time, bro. And uh, I'm going to try to find it. Let me, let me ask you one real quick while I find it. Hey, by the way, anybody out there, listen, hey, if you don't believe in God, do what you do, bro. But I, I suggest you believe in positive energy, if anything, if, if not anything else. Yeah, I was just going to say he had to, uh, well, I'll let this commercial play. Bold commercials. Good on you, bro. Get your monetization. Good on you. Um... But that's one thing I was going to say. That'd probably be the hardest thing about interviewing Upchurch is structuring it. You know what I mean? Structuring it as like uh, an actual interview um, instead of just shooting the shit and getting stoned. Oh, no. But what I was saying earlier, I, uh, <laughs> I was going to do a challenge that was like drive something with the clutch. <laughs> you know, turn on the blade of uh, like a zero turn. That's like, cool. Later. Shit like that. Shit that you really wouldn't think. Oh, they don't know how to do that. But but dude, a lot of motherfuckers really don't though. What percentage 
of Americans cannot drive a manual transmission? A lot. A lot. Only 18 percent of America can drive a manual transmission. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Oh, that is crazy. That is crazy. That's the first car I've ever had, bro. Every you country just, singer that sees this, they're gonna go buy one and try to learn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Only two out of ten people know how to drive a stick. That's that's oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Smoke a little cigar every now and then. I don't think my uh, my kids know how to just drive a stick, out, man. though, because I don't. Know I just like stick. talking music and anything music with people, man. Dude, music is just like you said earlier. For uh, Kid Rock's in love with music, mm -hmm. bro. I just I don't know what it is, but at an early age, it's just it's like therapy. Mm hmm. Bro, I was watching a guy on Joe Rogan's podcast the other night, and he was talking about certain elements of life being math that matters in the world, and music was one of them. To, really? To like to like change the energy of. The world. That's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's facts. Man, Joe Rogan has some interesting stuff, bro. He like, does. Some really, really interesting stuff. All right, we back. We back. We had to make some adjustments. I don't know if necessarily Joe Rogan says it's super interesting stuff. Um, he definitely has some of the best guests, though. Because he has, like, random guests you would never think of. You know what I mean? Like some guy that, you know, hiked across Alaska or something. Uh, and it ends up being like a cool podcast with really interesting stories. And nobody else would have the random dude who hiked across Alaska. Or like the alien dudes he has or that kind of stuff. Okay, so you said something about song lyrics earlier. You're very lyrical. He dropped the camera. Okay. <laughs> I did drop the camera. Don't, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't tell my wife. No. Um... Yes, 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 yes. You talked about lyrics earlier. I have some lyric questions from different songs. Yeah. Okay, first of all, best country music, best decade in country music, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. Mm. I'd say somewhere between the 90s and 2000s. I, 90s was like That's for golden all music. age, man. No, I, that was the peak for all music, the 80s and 90s. It was the peak for country, for rock. It was the, maybe not rock. Rock might have peaked in the 80s, 70s. Um, but, uh, yeah, 80s and 90s is where it was at. I love the old stuff, too, you know. But, Me, too. But 90s. That's the stuff that really, I think, birthed what the 90s was for mm -hmm. country. That's what I identify country music as you know i guess some somewhat because i grew up during the 90s yeah but like it was just so much going on it wasn't just oh, yeah. one label right. or two labels controlling everything it was just so much different stuff going on you so anticipated albums yeah you anticipated more. albums you could buy them at walmart you could you know it was about the art instead of the profit it was about as well. the art instead of the profit yeah. like, you mind you mind if i no i don't mind at all yeah, it was about the art instead of the profit. It was about, dude, this dude can sing. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter if he weighs 300 pounds or, or, or right. whatever. Doesn't matter if he has a six pack. And What's your favorite? Uh, who's your favorite artist or album from that time? Oh, he's like, interviewing me now. I'm not the interviewer, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the spot. Uh, from that time? Yeah. Bro, my dad has always been a huge George Strait fan, but like, my dad, like, George Strait is the only, only artist. Mm -hmm. My favorite. Bro, I don't know. But if I question. had to say from memory one, and nowadays I don't like him as much. Mm -hmm. And that's the weird part. Mm -hmm. But if I had to say one, I guess I can remember whenever I got the Fresh Horses album, Garth Brooks. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, he wasn't like, like now it's like, I, I would pick somebody, pick somebody else probably, but yeah. as a kid, I remember my uncle buying me that album. Mm. And I was like, love it. Fucking right. I wore it out. When I was a kid, I had a good time by Alan Jackson. Alan That's kind of funny. So it's basically like this album got me hooked on music, but I don't like the album now. But it's my favorite album from the time because it got me hooked on music. That makes sense. I don't even know how I would answer that question. Your favorite, <clears throat> your favorite artist from the eighties or nineties? Yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, that's a tough question. That's a tough question. Jackson, yeah. Alan, Alan's another one, bro. Um, mm. He's another one where if you didn't, yeah, if you didn't listen to Alan Jackson, he's like a holographic Charizard, bro. First edition. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the real deal. Have you guys seen the new John Wick yet? Skin feel tight and dry. Try Hydro Boost Gel Cleanser. It's a cleanse. I and started rewatching the older ones. But uh, uh, I think I watched one and two. And I'm gonna watch three, and then uh, then we'll be ready for four. When a new movie comes out, I like to watch the uh, you know the leading up to stuff before it, and get it fresher in the brain. It makes you enjoy the movie more when you're not thinking the whole time. Wait, you're like, wait, does that does that correlate with the last movie? Is that you know what I mean? Uh, it's just easier to have it fresh in your brain. Um. My bad. Back to question. No, no, no. Hey, this interview is ADD across the board, baby. Sorry, sorry for that. But, uh, ADD interview. You know, I like lack that. of media experience. We ain't got no media experience. Hey, I'm the lack of media experience here. So, in your song "Traveler," mm -hmm. you use the lyrics: "Camera flashes really will make you go blind." Mm -hmm. You've always seemed super down to earth, but was there ever a time where you felt that you had to battle a demon with? Like, did people get to you with fame and you kind of, like, ever fed into it? I've never seen it, but... Um, That's a good question. You mean, like, uh, the, uh, I say, you mean, like, negative things? Or you mean, like, uh, like positive things, like money? Like, uh, or not positive, but you mean things like money, like success things, like money and cars and stuff? Or, like... Yeah, well, like, you can... No, I think he's asking if he ever fell into, like, the the fame trap where... You got that ego where now you're you're better in people, and I can definitely say Up Church is not that guy. He's not that guy. Like <coughs> there was a famous there was a famous uh, artist who said the worst thing you can do is believe it when people tell you that you're the best thing in the world. Oh, bro, that's true. Yeah, and I've never seen it, and, and that was kind of a question I had because man, sometimes whenever. There's one point in my, my life when I had a lot of money. Yeah. Like I actually was doing really good. Not now. Um, and I felt like I was kind of in the big head. And I had to like yeah. squash my ego. You know what I'm saying? I had to. And I did that. Mm. And that's hard, man. Deal, See, dealing with that kind of fame. Yeah. And you're so, But he's so down to earth. It's nuts. It's. Okay, so here's my thing. My close friends and, so, and work associates, they're always like looking at me being like, you have no idea who you are. Not, not like you don't know who you are as a person. Okay. You don't know what you have done. Type I hear shit. you, show. I In a good way. And I, I, I'm guessing, yeah, like. All right, so side tangent on my John Wick comment. We Are the Show says uh, him and his old lady scene, and, and it wraps up the series. Uh, so it was a conclusion. And uh, definitely Kiana's last movie in the in the series is what you're thinking based off of the movie. How do I explain it? Unless he dies in it, and then obviously that would be the end of it. He probably dies in it, huh? You can tell me, bro. It's all right. I don't know. Like, I have people saying, hey, you could approach this this way or this way, but I always approach it like I'm still just Ryan from around here. Right. right you know? Right. And you always got people being like, oh, man, but you could do this. You could ball out and do this. It's like, yeah, but... That's not who I am. Like I'm still just like this, you know. Like I think the idea of being famous and having all the money is the flashiness and all this stuff. When look at artists like Kurt Cobain, he was the opposite. He, you know what I'm saying? Like he got he got mad when they started mass producing Nirvana shirts, yeah, and stuff yep. like that because he wanted to be personal. So, and I've always really like I would sacrifice myself, put myself in a bad position. For someone else to be in a good position, and that is a good and a bad quality to have. So, I guess you could say I really haven't stopped to look around, right? To even almost be like that, but I'm the how I grew up. I'm just so uh, I don't want to be weird, but like turned off by 
people thinking they're the shit. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. That's why you never see me really attacking nobody, bro, except for only people who fuck with me first. Because fuck them, they're a bully, bro. So be mean to them. Like, it, it's just to. so. It's, it's, and I, I, I believe you 100%. And, like, just meeting you, well, well I, I was probably spent more time with you now before, mm-hmm. like, before I met you a couple times at shows or whatever. Yeah. But, like, it, for sure, like down to earth, dude. You want some Fanta, dude? Come here, like, just, just, just chill stuff, man. I appreciate just real that, stuff, man. and and uh, you know, I, and I feel the same way. I feel like that's you know, people are getting a real deal. Follow the question: Is there any artist or person you're willing to mention who you've noticed who had a huge change in their demeanor because, like, you met them one time and then you met them again? You're like, which you don't have to mention any names, but like. They have changed because of their success in playing. Hmm. Hmm. Or that maybe that you notice like that you haven't. I'm trying to think. Yeah, that's kind of most of the time with me at least, and it might be who I choose to be around. But I've gotten the wrong idea about an artist before, like in a bad light, and then been with them after. And been like, no, they're a good person. Ah, okay. And and now that I'm at the level I'm at, uh, which you know I'm not at the top or nothing, but I'm at a level where I've learned the knowledge of I know why they were acting like that. Mm. They were stressed out. They were there was thirty motherfuckers in the studio while he was trying to write a song, and he was irritated. You know, like stuff like that. And oh, I, I'll man. say it. You know, I mean, um, and it's somebody that I grew up on that. You know, a, a little piece of him is in my music style, and that's Yellow Wolf. Yellow Wolf, Yellow Wolf. You know, I, I don't want to go into detail about it, because, you know, I like him. But we've had disagreements, for sure. Sure. You know, we've, you know, we've butted heads before, but I know why now. You know, and he, I don't care, he's a, he's a great artist, he's super artistic, he's, you know, he's original. I mean, bro, what country... You know, that's one artist I never really gave a fair shake is Yellow Wolf. So maybe we'll have to do a deep dive on Yellow Wolf. Um, But he also got on the uh, anti uh, Adam Calhoun bandwagon there for a minute and was helping that um, that little white dude beef with uh, Adam. Um. So for a couple different reasons, I never, I've always enjoyed some of his songs. Like I did that um, Alligator Boot song with Jennings on my channel and Yellow Wolf's on there. I've heard Pop the Trunk. Um, uh, his song with Eminem is obviously really good. Um, but I've never done like, uh, you know what I mean? That's less than a handful of songs from him I've heard. So if you guys want to see it, let me know. Maybe we'll do a... Maybe we'll do a deep dive on Yellow Wolf. Kid did. What country dude? What actual country dude now that raps don't know who Yellow Wolf is? Yellow Wolf <laughs> was a turning point for country dudes rapping, bro. Right, when I first right. seen him on Source Magazine, bro, standing there with a toboggan on and deer and fucking Chevrolets tatted on him and you know redneck on his fucking throat, I was like, no way. <laughs> There's somebody like me that's doing this shit, bro. And he's standing beside him and them. You know what I mean? Right. I know exactly what you mean. You know, so how, you know, I know what you mean. Sorry, real quick. I'm gonna make sure my dog's okay. <laughs> Ryan's dog had too many dog beers. Oh shit. Biore blemish patches. Absorb plus an oil. Your visible results. He's being goofy. <laughs> Okay, bro. No, no, you're Alright, anyway. We're gonna have to keep that in there. We're gonna make that outtake. <laughs> <laughs> Had to make sure my pup was alright. No, you're good, man. Oh, yeah, what I was gonna say is I know exactly what you mean by you saw it and you're like, whoa, like deer heads and stuff by Eminem and like, yeah. you know, you can do that. And I know exactly what you mean by that because Yellow Wolf, yeah, he did it a long time ago, but whenever I saw. No, it looks like the stream is down. It looks like the stream is down. I just lost all viewers on Rumble. Hold on a second. 
I don't see any issue on my end. I don't see any issue on my end. Yeah, we still got internet. We still got internet on my end. I don't show any notifications that anything is lagging or anything like that either. Yeah, I don't know. Something happened with the with the Rumble stream. I don't know. Hopefully it comes back up. We'll keep trucking though. We'll keep trucking. I saw the first video was like the country way or Oh yeah. Uh what uh I live out in the country. country. Yeah, yeah. Uh can't remember the name of that song. My own way or country. Uh, country way. Country way. So that was probably the first song or video I saw that popped up of yours on my YouTube one day and I was just like you can do that? Yeah. Oh, it was out for you on Monday also? Interesting. No, I was on Rumble Monday as well. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, you can do that. Because, like, I mean, Yellow Wolf is awesome, but, like, it's still, a lot of it is just still rap. Right. Like, really, really rap. But then whenever you add the strings, you know? Yeah, all and, like, and, uh, like in Ghost. Like in, oh, I love Ghost. Yeah. Thank you, man. I love Ghost. And the harmonica. Mm. Oh, yeah. And so whenever you do that, whenever whenever you uh, are, are, are your artist and you're like, hey, man, I want it to be different like this. I saw that video and I was just like, you can do that? Mm. You can rap like Spitfire, like Eminem. And it gave you, it gave you like, like, that's cool as fuck to know that you thought of it like that. Well, it was like, okay, so what I, from what I remember, right, I've always played in a lot of, like, just country. Right. Or just metal. Like, when I was in high school, I played metal. Mm -hmm. Kind of some metal bands. Yeah. And so, like, just country, or, you know, you play in, like, a just metal band, we want to be like these guys. Right. Or we want to be like this, right? But whenever I saw that, I was just like, that's like nothing that I, and I was thinking to myself, bro, I love music. I, I'm not a great singer. I can rap a little bit, and so I got in, good series, bro. Shit, bro. So I got interested in like that's like that would be my thing, like because mm -hmm. I'm little dude, and it just like made me realize like you can make a there's uh, there's gonna like there's gonna be an always evolving on. door for music, mm -hmm. and it's just pause that for a quick sec. Looks like Rumble's back up and going, folks. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, my bad. Something that's just incredible. Music is going to last to the world. To the right, no is, sound left, bro. To the right, no sound left. And it's just, it's just something to just think about and fathom for a minute. Mm -hmm. Bro, back in the days in BC times, mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of years ago, people were playing some kind of music probably. Oh, yeah. Probably sticks, a, sticks on a rock, anything. Probably bro. a kid hitting something or deer yeah. skins or... Deer skins over some circular... Bongos, like you're saying. Bongos, in your, you got bongos in your room, but I probably love bongos. <laughs> but yeah, just just thinking about how ancient music is, and how they were doing it back then, and we're going to be doing it for the rest of the existence. It's used for re religious purposes, ceremonial purposes, yeah, everything. David played a drum in the Bible, and it, it's just it's just one of those things where, at the time and place we live in, I feel like you. And one of my other favorite artists was Johnny. And I really like Kid Rock, too. I feel like all three of those people are true artists. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, like, there's only certain points in time where you get to experience that. Mm -hmm. You know, with certain people. But, like... Oh, wow. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. Like, the people we learned about, we weren't around to experience it. Huh. Like, live. Like, nobody can go see Hank Singer. <clears throat> oh, man. That'd be something. Right. Or... or um, you know, back Elvis, in the day, bro, with Mozart. Oh, so you no know, Chopin, Bob, Beethoven, Beethoven. Chopin. You'll never be able to see Beethoven live. Only the people who were alive during his lifetime had a had a uh, what's it called? An organic reaction with the guy. Right. 
You know, I've never actually sat and thought about that, which sounds wow. crazy because that's something some you would think a music about. person would think about. That's a that's a right up church thought of it. You know, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. It is. So I was listening to the Pioneer. Yes. And I, yeah, I, I cranked the Pioneer album Pioneer the other day, bro. And I just banger. I wrote down some questions. Front I was to like, back. Dude, front to back. Those it's a lyrics. Banger. So, hey, bro, if there's ever a song that sucked, bro, I'd be like, yo, church, that shit sucked, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, um, I haven't found one yet, bro. I mean... Yeah, it's like, Ryan Upchurch doesn't make music that sucks. He has songs that I don't like as much, but he doesn't make bad music. Um, he doesn't make any bad music that I've heard. I'm trying to think if I've heard a song I don't really like. Maybe it was... I don't know. No, I don't think I've heard a bad song that I like absolutely didn't like. There's obviously ones that you like more than others, but I don't think I've heard a bad song from them. Even if it's not my favorite, bro, it's just like, it's still, it's still good, bro. By the way, I mean to cut you off, bro. No, yeah, I'm being a rude motherfucker, bro. No, but uh, reactors out there, bro, if, even if it is your favorite artist, even if it's if it's me, bro, it doesn't matter. If something sucks, tell your favorite artist it sucks, bro. It keeps them a better artist longer. <laughs> that's and wild. that's just facts. That's crazy. That's you know crazy. I mean? That's a crazy statement because, like you said, sometimes it does piss them off, but they try harder. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Yeah, We Are The Show says the stream dropped on Rumble, but it seems to be back now. Well, I appreciate you hanging in there. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I didn't get any errors or anything on my end. Um, so who knows? But I haven't found nothing, bro. To be bro we I ain't trying to kiss your ass. I'm just no, saying, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that, bro. I really, I really, I really, I really enjoy it. And it's like, part. you know, people wonder how music got to the state it is, and they, you know, every generation is like, why is this happening? Because we all let it happen, you know? Like, yep. Money it, it, and, and, and the soft ass world we live in now, bro, it's okay to give criticism. If they don't like it, oh well. Facts. Life's better under our roof because we're here to protect I'm really your trying to think of a American song that I don't insurance. like of Upchurch. It's perfectly fine, and guess what? It's not going to stop. You know the song that I kind of don't. But I do like it. Yeah, there's just parts of it I don't like. But that's not it. Yeah, this is going to bother me uh, now. We got social media. Sure. And so guess what? They don't have to take the, get out of the kitchen if they can't take the heat anyway. Mm -hmm. If you're an artist, you put yourself out there. All right. I put out a song called Woke Nashville not long ago. Oh, yeah, I seen that. Did you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did the production myself, so ignore the production. <laughs> I need some production tips, man. I, I need to hook up with a, with a producer. But, um, yeah, like... To me, it was just like, there was people on there, oh, dude, this is like if kid, one dude, one dude, bro. This is like if Kid Rock got fat and couldn't sing. And so I was like, thanks, I'm still fucking Kid Rock, man. But you say, yeah, you're still talking about me, you're still thinking about me, and you're still commenting on it. So. That's, what, that's what I said. I said, I said, tell all your friends and tell them how terrible it is. <laughs> I, always, I always comment you're doing a great job. Because, <laughs> you know, in, in a sense, they're playing their part. Mm -hmm. I mean, bro, if you didn't have if you didn't have haters and bad shit that happens to you, your story would be boring. Absolutely, absolutely. Bad shit has to happen. And, and there's sure. a if you can double your haters, you can double your views. <laughs> Question right there, real quick: How have you learned how to develop like thick skin, or, or, or what? At what time in your career did you have to realize like people are going to hate on me if I have? Eighty million dollars, five hundred houses. They're going to hate on me. It don't matter. What, did you? Oh yeah, that's that was definitely a turn, a, a actual turning point thing that happened. Like, and I would say it wasn't it wasn't a long time ago either. It was just yeah. recently, like in the past six months. Oh wow. Yeah, you know, once you reach a stress level and stuff, and I mean, we all, we're we don't want to drain the whole battery on this on your cameras, but you know, with all the shit that I've gone through. You know, I used to stress about it and it used to drive me nuts until one day I was like, 
Fucking who gives a fuck? They're not dying with me, bro. I'm not. They're not in my motherfucking bed. They ain't chilling in my house. So fuck it. They don't pay your bills. At the end of the day, bro, you got to know that that person obviously has a, <clears throat> a worse life than you. Otherwise, they wouldn't be saying anything. What's the new T-shirt idea? Oh, double the haters, double the views. That is a good slogan, huh? And that's a, dude. I think that's a lot of it, to be honest. Yeah. Like a lot of people are miserable, bro. Bro, they don't want to get their ass up and go do nothing. Yeah. Either, and, and and that's dude. A lot of people, man. Like you, like you remind me of somebody. Like, cause when I was a kid, it was like I could be happy if I was eighteen years old going to the skate park with ten dollars mm -hmm. to my name, or if I had. A million dollars. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta find happiness, man. Yeah. Like and it's it look around right now, bro. You got this thing in your hand called social media making you be anti social, but it's tricking you into thinking you are being social when really you're not. You're just only in a room by yourself. People are like let's know that. So you gotta get out there. It's only right that you interact with other humans because other humans make you the human that you are, the better version. If you're by yourself all the time, you're liable to end up a fucking crazy madman who's, you know, wants to kill people. If you go interact with people and they're, you know, hey, maybe you shouldn't think like that. Here's some things you can do to yeah. be happier. Want to come hang out? Like, those things make you good people. And look, violence is going up, depression's going up, and it's because of that's the crazy. That's facts. People are, we are people. We, we need human interaction. Easy. The best line I've heard in this interview so far, so people think that social media makes you social, mm -hmm. but it actually makes you anti-social. Mm -hmm. Bro, that's ironic. Yeah, man. That's a crazy thought. Oh, yeah. But you're right, man. People like, even my wife, like, she, she trims me. Sometimes she gets on me. Mm -hmm. Pretty hard, but she tells me, "Hey, you know, don't try not to, yeah, you know, whatever." And man, some some of the people that are close to you. You gotta listen to them. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if you're Elvis. It don't matter. I mean, sometimes you you know, if you know they love you, oh yeah. Sometimes you need to listen to them, and, and if their heart's in the right place, and everything, bro. Nobody's rich and famous enough to do something that nobody is rich and famous enough to not do any wrong. Everybody's eligible to still do it. Everybody is. Actually, Everybody if you is. ask me, bro, famous people and rich people probably get away with more than anybody. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, I would say that's a very fair statement. Well, when they go to jail, they go to... Yeah. They're going jail. back home, bro. <laughs> right, They're right. faking jail. So I have a question, and it's pretty deep, bro. This one? And we're going we gonna to get in them, like, well, what a bit. Yeah, it's going to It seems by some of your lyrics in your songs... Mm -hmm you've written lately, also paintings and your interests and such, that you've had an experience with something supernatural. Yep. I myself had an experience with something spiritual in 2008. Is that the case with you? Yes. Uh, Silver Circles was one that blew my mind because Bro, I Bro, you've never heard the mm -hmm. Upchurch, Upchurch um, Close Encounter story? I've heard it before. This is a good one, bro. Tune in. That it was kind of a pair... Oh, I love, that's a great. Oh, you talking about uh, Fire in the Sky? Fire in the Sky. That's Dude, a good ass movie, bro. Love that movie. Oh, I'm sorry. What was your question again? I started thinking about aliens. <laughs> that, was the, that was the question, bro. I myself had an experience with something in 2008. Did you? Did you have an? Have you ever had an experience with something kind of supernatural, or even just oh, yeah. like, like you said, energy or? Yes, bro. It's in this house. Look, oh, he does say there's. I'm not here to convince ghost, nobody. Right? You know what I mean? But. And if they're watching this, there was a guy named Turtle. Hmm. He came here and did an interview one time. He had full battery on his shit, everything. I mean, I know nothing about cameras, really. I mean, I've been filming off an iPhone. Hmm. They get here, they sit down, it was dark outside. So he looked up during the interview, did that just go off? Because I'm about to tell you that it. Something just drained the battery. Hold on. What the hell? Yeah, that was the sound. Ain't no way. Yeah. Is that one hot? No. That it made noise from that one. Was it that one? I yes. think it was. I think it was. hundred percent. This one's still on. What made a noise? Well the honestly the the battery was dead. 
The no, battery was the battery was low in the yeah, this one's dead. Are you serious? Yeah. But the battery was low. Okay. Because I forgot them at home. Okay. <laughs> I was just making sure. The ba I, I forgot a, Because a they of left them. because something drained the battery of a full battery and they went to go look at it, look to see what he looked up at on the other camera, and when they did, it was blacked out and there was nothing there. They left and got scared. No shit. I swear to God. But no, it's a good thing that like that. Whatever this vibe is in here, it's it's a good it's a good thing. It likes me, so I'm cool with him. Well, I think we're still good on the uh, on the energy in the room. Um, he's like, I don't know. Whatever the entity is, he seems to be okay with me, so I'm okay with him. <laughs> he is literally having a moment right now, like a what the fuck moment. You can see it on his face. <laughs> Yeah, that that one. I that's that's as much as I would like to capture a ghost to ghost. Um, I'm pretty sure that that battery was um, pretty low. Because, but uh, to answer your question, yeah, most definitely. We gotta tell the story. We might have a problem. And, um, you know, I feel like, well, I've, I've seen videos you have posted. There's one video that tripped me out because you were like, in the, was you in the basement? And you were just like, oh, yeah. The light, some of the lights a couple years ago? Or, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's wild, man. And, uh, yeah, I believe, I believe there's something. I mean, dude, there's, it's, it's not. It's a vibration, bro. Vibration. It's what vibe are you putting out? Based off what vibe you put out, based off. Well, based off what Bobby put out, I think you're more likely to come in contact with these spiritual things. Mm. And some people might be like, oh, that's crazy. Well, tell cavemen, because people have been talking about it since then. You know? No, I, I think there's definitely something to it, because a lot oh, yeah. of studies on, like, what, ESP and stuff? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, brain frequencies and everything. Mm -hmm. and, and there's one, there's, I like to watch Unsolved Mysteries. Bro, me too. I don't know what it is, but there's something about Unsolved Mysteries that, like... I love it. It freaks me out, but at the same time, it interests me. Mm -hmm. There's one episode where a dude got struck by lightning, and, like, afterwards he could do, like, pi. You know, pi, like... Yeah, 3.14. Yeah. He could do, like, thousands of numbers afterwards. Like, just like, come, like in his head. He said they would just show up in his head. What? Yeah, and he, and he would just recite them. That's and wild. It is nuts. That is wild. And also he would, like, predict stuff, too, and, and mm -hmm. like... Yeah, he could see. It was. I think we wild. speak the future to us. Honestly, that's what I think happens. It's not so. Can I ask you a question about your grandfather, though? Bro, you can ask absolutely whatever you want. If you could invite your grandfather to any one show that you perform. All right. One thing that's bothering me: what's up with Up Church's Cheeto fingers here, bro? Like this is a band aid, obviously. But what's up with your Cheeto fingers, bro? Were you, you got munchies? What's happening? Which one would it be? And if you could talk to Matt backstage, which, what would you say? Hmm. Uh, I would do a concert just for me and him in my front yard on my porch. No way. That's awesome. And I would tell my guards, nobody's allowed here right now. And I would just play him all this stuff that I've made recently for this next country album, to be honest. Wow, bro. Because I That's like... Cool. Uh, That's cool. I like to... See, it's a thing. Like, a lot of artists want to stay young, right? Well, getting old is inevitable. And time don't stop. It keeps going. I would rather embrace my age and what's going on because, personally, as an artist, I do like my younger stuff, you know? But I ain't 19, 20 no more. I like what I'm making now because I've honed in on who I am as a man, what my morals are in the world, like how I treat people, and that stuff is in my music, and I would like him to see how I turned out by being with him and showing him the music. That's awesome, man. And your music has come full circle. Oh, and, thank you. Man. And just like, you know, you could tell that you're you're progressing, bro. Like you, Got to. Like you don't stop evolving. I just did a recent reaction to a song by Upchurch called Monroe. 
And I want to say this one was back in high school, maybe. He looks young as fuck on the, on the video. I'm probably going to put that out tomorrow. I have three Up Church reactions recorded. Um, I've put them all together in one video. I think I'm going to drop it tomorrow. So it's going to be like uh, 45 minutes or so of, uh, of Up Church. We're, uh, we're dropping that. Two of his new songs and one of his older ones. Um, but the reason I brought it up is because you could definitely see the progression. The older song is good still, don't get me wrong. Um, but you can definitely see the advancement. Progressing, and your, your sound is coming, you know, it's coming to... You know why? Because I am writing the age I am right now. So it's, it, people think, how do you do this? Because I'm going by, I'm going day by day, just like they say. Mm -hmm. You can't be a 40-year-old artist, and we know some of these. 40-year-old artist trying to be a 20-year-old artist. Yep. People yep. become uninterested because you got to think, these people grow up with you. They're growing up too. Right. You know? Man, that's a good point, man. That's such a good point. Hey, so you're 31? Yep. You're never going to be 31 again. Mm -mm. After you turn 30. <laughs> <laughs> and for 365 days, you'll Except be 30. Except for tomorrow and the day but after. So <laughs> the, third, the music comes out when you're 31, probably isn't going to come out when you're 40. And it didn't come out when you were... 20, 25, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, bro, yeah. It's, it's like a storyline. Bro, you want to hear what your new shit sounds like? Absolutely. And I don't care, you can put it in this. You sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Hey, exclusive. This is an exclusive right here. Okay, let's go. Story. This was the uh, surprise bonus we heard at the beginning of the video. Is that they're going to be some Stone, 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 my little exclusive music <laughs> drops? <laughs> He's a dirty wizard in the studio, man. Dirty little wizard, you. Bro, shit like this. So, this is along the lines of what we're actually talking about right now. So, I would like to show it to you. Absolutely. Please tell me it's kind of a black sheep. Some stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it comes down to this. You want to be the beer that goes bad and turns green in a couple weeks, or you want to be the wine that can sit in a bottle for 20 years and only taste better, bro? Oh, man. That's cool. You know what I mean? That's, a, that's an awesome lyric. That's a cool one. like fine wine, baby. Hey. I love the bounce. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, bro. You want to hear some bounce bounce? That's the thing, bro, though. Your melodies, though. Like, like they're different. Dude, thank you, bro. They're just, it's not the same crap over and over. I was a percussionist in uh, in high school. Really? In like the band? Yeah, I mean, uh, in middle school, in, yeah, middle school and in the beginning of high school. Hmm. And I got kicked out, you know. So it is what it is. Bro, right. I, I never learned to read music or nothing. Give me a snare drum, bro. You think I was on a drum line. Really? So, yeah, I just, I love drums. I've always loved drums. I think playing in band and being a percussionist is what gave me the weird rhythms and not yeah. being able to read music and the lyrical rhythms too, dude. That's that's a that's a uh, bro, shout all, out to the drug to the band teacher. Sorry, you. Uh, you uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, I think not knowing how to play an instrument the correct way makes you a more intricate artist. Yeah, yeah. real though. Because you're not generic and you're not doing the same old that we like. Right. That way. And it's it's organic. It's really cool. Music is one of those things, man. Would you like to hear one more? Yes. Well, if you're if you're teaching yourself how to play an instrument, technically you may teach yourself wrong, but that may be a unique, different, and better sound. So there is definitely a true aspect to that for sure. You oh, sure you got better? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I got better. It's called Jumps the Gun. Jumps the Gun. Oh. 
music. So, got music. Who jumps the gun? So, if the mainstream is the gun shooting everybody down, there was one. There's always one motherfucker that jumps over the fucking gun and whacks that motherfucker all over that shit. Jeffrey jumping down, bro. <laughs> Self made success. Thank you. Love it. <laughs> Take your ass off. Yep. And who's the rest of your right there? Not this dude. All right. This is exclusive, guys. The one who jumps the gun is able to hurt them the most because they live through all the bullets. <laughs> the one who jumps the gun. So catchy, bro. So catchy. Thank you. That's an interesting line, though. A couple bullet holes never hurt nobody. <laughs> That's a funny statement. <laughs> so what, so what, so shoot, me with, shoot me with a rumor to try to put me above it's so like talking shit that he thinks he's better than everybody putting him up on a pedestal when he doesn't belong there let's see what he says hey, when you reach such a level bro everybody wants to fuck you over yeah it, there's, there's just a level you get at and then everybody just wants to take shots at you because they want a piece of what that is. And that's a scary thing. It's, it's His dad called in church and said, hey, let me get it. Let me talk to your dad. <laughs> Skin feel tight and dry? Try Hydro Boost. Did dad Jack not want to be on camera? Let's hydrate. get his call on camera. Know? I hope it's there. That would be funny. That was... That's my dad. Oh, shit. You, you need an answer. Go ahead. My dad. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. Hi. This is up, church. <laughs> well, I didn't think it sounded like the Richard. Oh, well, that guy's name was Trey, actually. <laughs> what are you doing, Skin? Heck yeah. Shit, that's a good thing. I'll let you talk to you, son, Bubba. I just want to say hey. All right, Dad. I'm going to turn my phone off because I'm in the middle of an interview. and, and Has the prices of lumber went up because of the cool. economy? Or is it because Come and Get It has been busting floors all over the United <laughs> States over the past 10 years? That was, that was supposed to be a warm-up question, but... but, uh, but Price yeah. of lumber went up because I keep wishing a motherfucker would... <laughs> <laughs> but, um, all right, so when when my grandpa passed away, I was given one of his toolboxes, amongst other things that I really really cherish. Yeah. What is one thing that if if there is one thing you got to keep of your grandpa's when he passed away that you? Bro, I got it downstairs. Cherish. Can we go grab it? Take me thirty seconds. Yes, yes. All right, we're back. And my last question was. What was the most thing, what is the thing you cherish most that you got when your grandfather passed away? So, here it is. The Mohegan sign that was on his clubhouse. Oh. After the house got foreclosed and we couldn't go back there, I jumped the fence and I took it. I don't, <laughs> I don't even care to say on camera, you're not getting it back. Uh, I will just burn it if you're going to come get it. That's awesome, bro.
So the most, so so that was a sign on his house. Yeah, that was like his uh, his big red barn. It was his like clubhouse, uh, and uh, he had that up there. It was like a little poker house. That's awesome, bro. That's awesome, man. And uh, man, I got a toolbox. Yeah, and like a couple of other things. Because whenever like they passed away, everybody was coming and taking stuff, and I'm just like, I'm just, I just, I'm like, you know, I, I get it. Yeah. But I'm like, I just want things to stay the same. That's that's kind of a hang up, I guess. But. Because then sometimes my members don't get anything. Right, right. And, yeah. And, yeah, and I just I just want everything to stay the same because we still go up there. Yeah. And, and like, that's where my dad's office is and stuff. And, and so, um, you know, I got that toolbox and I got a couple things, man. It's just, it's so cool. When I get something I really, I really cherish. Like, I go put it in the toolbox and just leave it in there. Mm -hmm. But um, But anyway. I don't really know exactly what I got from my grandfather. The one thing that I do remember and cherish... Um, I stole his Adidas pants, his Adidas, uh, like, uh, uh, well, they're pajama pants for me. Um, but they're so old, they're all ripped and they got holes in them and shit, but I love these pajama pants cause they were, cause they were grandpa's. Anyways, man, that's awesome. So you got to sign the, the Mohican sign. And uh, did you get anything else? Like, the... oh yeah, I got a chicken box. I got uh, my brother's got one of his guitars. It's in there. That's, uh, that's awesome. That's all kinds of stuff. That's really cool. All right, all right, all right, all right. How do you feel about the idea of possibly having children one day if you found the right person, or is that just a probably not going to do it, or definitely not going to do it? Uh, definitely a thing. Definitely, I, w I want to eventually. He wants but to. I want to make sure I get all my crazy out first. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know exactly. Because you know, when I have kids, I'm I'm gonna slow down a lot because I'm gonna be focused on just them. <laughs> you know, make sure they're respectful, they work hard, and they know all the good qualities of life that they have to have to be a good man or woman. It's great. That's great that you see it that way. Because a lot of people, man. They just look at it as like, I get insurance. Or, oh, yeah, that's, that's crazy, actually. My, I want mine to be an upstanding, functioning member of society. There you go. And, and yeah, you're responsible for another human being. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a big deal. And a lot of people, they treat it like it's a dog or a cat. Kids these days, bro, they need, all, they need as much attention from their parents as they can get, you know? 100%. 100%. I agree, bro. I, I'm that's 30. Nice six years old now just turned 36 and I don't have kids and I, I it's like I like the idea mm -hmm. but like you said like I want to be I want to have my music stuff or traveling doing videos or whatever like out of the way right you know what I'm saying because I can't do that if I have kids and but I don't want to look back and you know be like well I never did this because this right right or, yeah I never Plenty had separate chance. attention I never had a chance to interview Ryan Upchurch nah the boys got this one wrong they need to start having kids that's the best thing they'll ever do because I had a kid going to school. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Chevy or Ford or don't care. This morning, Star Farms veggie sausage. Best I believe Upchurch is about to disappoint me. I know he's a huge Mustang fan, so he might say Ford. Both. Depends on which one's faster and more comfortable. There you go, hey. bro. I like that answer. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Mustang. I mean, I'm more Ford guy. Yeah, 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 definitely. That hey, Mustang man you can't beat a Mustang. That's for sure. What you is the coolest beat a thing every time a fan a has ever given you? That fire pit in my front yard. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that was good to you, my fan. It says uh, it's got a great up church on it, and it says Ray County Cornbread. I've had it for seven years. Yeah. I got it in Wisconsin, and it was snowing, and the guy was like, "I got something for you." I was like, "All right, cool." He's like, "But I, you have a truck?" I was like, "Yeah." And he gave me that big ass fucking four hundred pound fire pit, bro. Made it himself. <laughs> he made so he already made it. and He was like, he made it, welded it, and everything. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because like, what if he couldn't find you or something? Like, couldn't? Or you were like, no, nah, I can't. Oh yeah, right. I'm so he, sure. Yeah, he was. Bro, I've had somebody bring a hood of a fucking Chevy or uh, a uh, Chevy Impala <laughs> in the meet and greet line, holding that motherfucker. <laughs> oh, I got one. All right. In the new Pioneer album, you have a feature with Project Pat. Pata. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. He's unique. He came. He came in. He came in unique on that song. I don't know about you, but when I was young, Project Pat was one of the most memorable 
Ooh, ooh, chicken head. Ooh, ooh, chicken head. And uh, savor. Don't want to be saved. Break the law. We ain't playing. How does it feel to have grown up as a kid if you listen to Project Pat and then to come and work with him Dude, as I, an adult? I, I love the fact that I got to have a feature with a legendary rapper from the South around here. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, come on, man. Six, six, three, blah, blah, blah. Three Six Mafia, all that. Right. Like my buddy, who was in, who in, Drew. What up, Drew? You little fucking. Uh, he's the one who introduced me to Three Six Mafia. Oh yeah. And all that, and I was like, dude, this is like fucking fight music type shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So to have a feature with him is amazing, especially right after fucking Knife Talk came out with Drake. Oh okay. Oh, you uh, put a song. He put a. He was on Knife Talk with Drake, and then right after is when we got that when the feature happened. I know, damn. Yeah. yeah, that's huge. That's huge, man. And and tennis, another Tennessee rapper. Mm-hmm. Another Tennessee Memphis boys right there. Tennessee hey. time, bro. That is big deal, though. Big deal. Guy goes from doing a feature with Drake. Next week, he's in a studio with Upchurch doing a feature there. You know, that's put up. That's put Upchurch on a level for sure. I'm, I'm down for the stake, man. It's just, it's just my home. I've been seeing, here's a weird question, bro. This, I don't know. This is, this is going to be fun. You can ask whatever. I've been seeing these country rapper yes. redneck boxing matches lately. Would huh? you? A redneck boxing match? There's like redneck boxing matches like Jesse Keith Willie was in. Oh, wait. No, yeah, I knew. But I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Would you ever consider doing that? Box, being on a redneck boxing match? I don't see Liberty it. UFC. Boxing. Yeah, if it was UFC gloves and grappling and everything all together, yes. Yeah, one hundred percent. Boxing, uh, personally, I don't like boxing. Right, right. But just, it was like UFC. I, I like to roll around on the ground and grapple and do all that. Yeah, it's a full body UFC. Yes, everything with bro, small gloves, bro. That'd be sick. Pay and they got it. And they got to It's got to be somebody on the same caliber. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't trying to make no little, little shithead who just don't like me famous for no reason. Right, right. I'd rather do it with somebody that, you know, same caliber type shit, so it's more fun for the fans. An artist or, like, uh, somebody who has something to lose, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who's not just out for clout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crap, it ain't, yeah. It ain't even got to be on no host, hostile type shit, you know, just for fun. Just for fun. Or for hostility and whatever, you know. There uh, there's a there's a question. Who should Upchurch fight in this hypothetical UFC fight? Um, I think he fucks up Shotgun Shane or uh, what's that other fucking weirdo's name? Hosier. I think one of those would be fantastic. The fans would love to see that. Except if, for some reason, Church lost. That would be horrible. I don't see Church as much of a fighter. I'm not saying that he can't fight or that he's weak or anything, but I don't I don't get that, like, vibe from him. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, Adam Calhoun, you get the vibe. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't get the fighter vibe from Love Church like that. Uh, so that, that would be interesting. It definitely would be interesting. It's it's weird, man. They're making a lot of drama about it nowadays, and like, it's like I, you know, I just like watching it for fun. Like you mm -hmm. said, like you know, it's kind of weird when there's all this drama. But, it's like, it's like but definitely, yeah, I would do that. Uh, but MMA style, bro. That would be Everything. sick. That would be sick. So, have you ever been out of the country? No. If you, you okay. If you haven't, would you ever like to go out of the country and visit somewhere? Yes. Wait, Wait, didn't Upchurch just go to... Mm -hmm. Wait a second, didn't Upchurch just go on vacation to some beach somewhere? Was that in America? I thought he went to Mexico or something. Did I not see that? I'm pretty sure I seen him on, on, on a vacation. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know. I'm pretty sure I did, though. There's a cave that I want to go to there. It's the biggest cave in the world. Holy crap. It's fucking badass. It's own eco. Oh, real quick. Shout out to all the Rumble people tuning in. I appreciate you. Make sure you follow the channel. We do go live often and regular. So make sure you follow so you can tap back in with us. System down there. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So like 
plants and stuff under the cave? Oh, bro, it's fucking beautiful. <laughs> you just gotta look it up. All you gotta do is type in Vietnam cave on your own time. You'll be like, what the fuck? <laughs> you can oh, fit yeah. an Empire State Building in it. I know a Kick cave that he's talking about, NFL and that would be an amazing thing to NFL see. Games they say that the cave is so big it has its own um, ecosystem. Yeah, the cave has its own ecosystem separate from the ecosystem in the jungle that's around it. Um, yeah, so that's definitely nuts. We talked so long the cameras died, only one camera rolling now. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful cave. That would be an awesome thing to see in person, for sure. I've been listening to the new Pioneer album, and in the song Ice Cold, there's a very raw and real line and lyric, and it just stuck out to me. Like, it just... Yeah. Like, it just grabbed me. I was like, bro, that's, that's deep. I'm interested in that. If I destroy... This line right here. If I destroy my life, at least it's all I know. Did you have anything particular in mind when you wrote that, or was it just a way of saying, hey, let me do me? No, it, it definitely does have a deeper meaning. So what I mean by that is, you know you know how you know how when there's a tornado, sometimes it picks stuff up and sits it down perfectly? So in a sense, it is destructive, but it's also beautiful, right? Because it can do beautiful things. You're like, wow. That's how I feel with music. Right. So I got... That's an I interesting. I got popular at such though. like a, a young age, kinda for different things. That at first it was like a storm, you know. And I, there's been times where I'm like, I don't really want a part of this, but it, it was always I was always coming back to it, coming back to it. And one day I realized I was like, you know what? Fuck it. If it's a fucking hailstorm, I want to be in it. Because even hailstorms, you know, it. As beautiful as some of these storms are, when we sit and gaze at them, it's still destructive as fuck. Yeah. That's how I feel I am with the music industry. Ah, uh, You know, that. of course I'm crazy. So, you know, I've been crazy in the past, yelling, screaming at motherfuckers and all this other shit. And, you know, uh, I guess I'm looked at as kind of the outcast or black sheep or whatever you want to call it. But instead of trying to not be it, I'm just going to fucking embrace it, dude. Because it's, it's going to be the realest story ever told. That's one and way to there's always it. going to be social media to back it up and show what I've said in the past and on the internet. Because you got to think, it's the first time that we're going to be able to go look back for ourselves in a hundred years and be like, were they lying or telling the truth? Huh. Right now is the most dire time to tell the truth. Because in the future, when all this is looked back on and studied like Hank and all them are now, Right, right. They're right. gonna know, bro. They're gonna be able to know what was real and what was not, and right. they're gonna look for what was real, bro. I mean, also aside from music, it's gonna be interesting to see twenty years from now, looking back on today, what actually sticks as history. Seeming out half the news is fake and everything's bullshit and made up, and it's gonna be interesting to see who gets to write the history, so to speak. Oh. Right. 100%. That's amazing. A great answer. It was like a story. like <laughs> Just like you said, though, like, so you got, and, and I love thunderstorms. Mm -hmm, me too. As long as there's no freaking tornado. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so, like, I love watching them, but like you said, they're, they're terrifying yeah. sometimes, you know? So, like you said, guess what? I'm going to reiterate on it. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be talking so much during no, that. you're good. So, like, you are the bad part from Nashville's perspective. Right. But from your fans' perspective... I'm them. You're you're the beautiful part. Um, it's yeah, the good part. I, I'm I'm one with them. Yep. Just yep. like a storm is one with a community. Yep. And you gotta have storms sometimes. Yeah. And so yeah. Everything I do affects the people that are living in my community who listen to my music per se. The breakdown is is necessary sometimes. Mm -hmm. The disaster is necessary sometimes. If you don't have the destruction, you can't rebuild. Yeah. Independent. Inside <laughs> every tornado, there's a blue sky. Forests do up. need to burn. That's a good answer, bro. This is true. Okay, so this is a crazy question. Yeah. In the song Black Sheep, you say on the chorus, millionaires might try might might try to have you killed mm -hmm. because of the hierarchy in the music industry that's losing its power yeah. and all the impact that you have and all the influence that you've had for other people to stay independent, even though some of them didn't, 
Um, <laughs> have you ever experienced any direct or indirect rumors of like somebody trying to? They're too secretive to let a rumor get out. Okay, and yeah. they got too much money. But I mean, hey. Well, you know. Put it this way. Oh no, bro! I ain't scared to answer none of these questions. I got you. <laughs> I they can try. I don't give a fuck. But what I'm saying is, look up the story of there was a country singer shot in the street outside of a club one night in Nashville in like either the late '90s or early 2000s. He was independent and he was going towards independent, and he was actually starting to pop until one day somebody shot him and nobody knows who done it. That's crazy. When you're messing with people's money, bro. Mm -hmm. That's when shit gets serious. It's not serious to people like us because no. we look for, we value other things than money. But to the ones who value only money, that's who you're threatening. And I don't care if I'm threatening them or not. That's deep. That's facts. Because, hey, that's facts. even if they kill me for being the way I am, if it ever comes. If you worship only money, what you will do for it is um, unlimited. To that, I don't think it would. I don't think they could. But if it ever did, at least, hey, I died being exactly what I was, bro. Exactly what I said I would be. Hey, ain't gonna be no other way. Can't be scared of that. Right. You gotta live your life. Mm hmm And, uh, dude, I mean, you get an army behind you, bro. So. You know, oh, and I love them too. The real ones, they they know, they respect it. And, uh, like you said, bro, when you're messing, that reminds me of a story I heard. There was a guy who invented a car that ran on water. Yeah, oh yeah, I heard about that. Heard about that? A tractor? Uh, was it a car? It was well it was like a, it was almost like a doom buggy kind of thing. But he was trying to develop yeah like tractors and like cars yeah. that ran on water. You didn't have to gasoline, you could actually stop on the side road and piss in the car. That's dangerous too though. He got the ecosystem. He got killed mysteriously kinda of, kinda of had a heart attack or something weird and imagine if water was gas for everybody, bro. <laughs> that would be fucking horrible. Oh, well, and we go yeah. to the river to fill their cars up. Well, yeah, that's true too. It, it, it's it's weird. It's weird the way like when you mess with somebody's money though. It, it kind of reminded me of that like a corporate thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who who uh, they, they they see it like you said. All they value is money. Yeah. And so that, that's, that's scary. Whenever you have somebody like that that's desperate, that's scary. I'm trying to change the energy in the world, bro. Dude. Put a lot of good stuff out of me. Put a lot, yeah, you yeah. put a lot of good stuff. I am not getting into positive vibes. And there's a lot of stuff out there right now. You know, as you know, you know, so-and-so, this person, they'll go back and forth and all these people. But, dude, really all that matters is that if you, even if you just keep making music, mm -hmm. you're going to change people. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. There's so many people out here, bro, we don't even know who probably, they look to that Rhino Church song. Mm. And it helps them, bro. Uh, right. I hope it does, bro, because the therapy of making it helps me. Their awesome. ears help me. It's awesome, bro. And uh, music, music's such a powerful thing, bro. Mm -hmm. He sounds okay, like so... he's trying to wrap the interview, but I, I just looked, there's 20-something minutes left, so they obviously get into something. I know, okay, this is an old song, uh, song lyric. I know that you've hinted to certain hard times in your songs, scrounging for that slick 80 cents. Mm-hmm. Almost got um, um, in uh, the one with Justin. Old was, days. Yeah, old days. Almost got front of those pounds to keep my family's lights. Can you pinpoint one specific time that you really thought you would never get the career kicked off and you would, like, it, it was it was like at a uh, turning point, like a crossroads, and you and you were having hard times, you were struggling real bad, and you just could not get seem to get it kicked off. Was there a time like that? Or, or did it just kind of just... No, I believed in it 100%, bro. For the baby. And it took my grandfather dying for me to do that. Because mm, yeah. he was the breadwinner for the, t for the whole family. So when he died, there's no breadwinner that's supporting that family. So, and, and any of my family members, if you're watching this motherfucker, anybody who says that ain't true, why'd the house get foreclosed on? Where'd the cars go? Where'd his chickens go? Where'd his tractor go? Where'd his pool table go? Where'd, his, where'd everything go? Exactly. That's your answer. An action is your answer. And when an action can be your answer, that's how you know that person's telling the truth and who's telling a lie. It's got to be the truth, bro. Bro, I mean, that's all it is to it. 
because you can't unforeclose the house 10 15 years ago right that's always going to be something that happened yeah. so if if what if, what a certain family but shout out to upchurch for all the bullshit he's having to deal with right now with his family that definitely uh sucks uh i have uh i have some experience there so uh I get you. I get you. I remember his saying on the internet is, oh, that ain't true, and he had his own goodness, and the other. Where is all his sh Where's all Chicken Willie's shit then? If that's fucking true, where's his shit? Go to the address, motherfucker. None of us are there. Mm. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, if a got, fact is a fact. A fact is a fact. If it got foreclosed on, there Seeing was... Seeing is believing. There was some money issues, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Why do you think me and my cousin are the ones who got the the work truck, Chicken Willie's work truck, and are the ones who fixed it up? Did you go buy it? Uh, Should we? Yeah, I bought it. You went bought from it? my uncle. Oh, I got you. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So like, like a bunch of his stuff got sold. Is that what you? Well, I mean, it's like they. I mean, there's certain family members of mine that deserve to get. And made sense to get these things like chickens, right, right. chicken pens, barrels. Right. It made sense for them to get those things. They didn't get those things. And me being, I'm just a guy who got a sign. I got one of his signs, and my brother's got his, you know, his guitar. Right, right. But there are things in the family that had sentimental value more than profit value that should have went to certain family members that they didn't have a chance to get. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. There was a couple of things like that in my family. So. Yeah. And it it, it 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 bothers me, but at the same time, you know, their memories. Of Splitting up dead people shit is always a weird thing for families, for sure. Um, yeah, it's just a weird, it's a weird situation altogether. I remember when my father died, and me and my sister had to uh, decide, you know, how we were going to divvy stuff up. Um, typically what it leans to is whoever's more emotional, I guess, or sentimental seems to be able to get what they want. And <laughs> shout out to you, sis. Not that you ever watched this, but, uh, you took some shit I could keep I would still have that you don't have. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. My heart. And I mean I know, yeah. you know, I know that things sometimes things aren't like they should be, but you know, it'll be okay. Yeah, for sure. Now, would you ever consider buying back his house? Is would that be a possibility or He would tell me no. He really? would say don't do that. That's stupid because it as when we lived there, it got flooded three times. Oh, do the, it's in a bad flood zone. He would be like, don't do that. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And his, his company logo was a job you can crow about. And the logo was a chicken. Now okay. I have a job I can crow about. Uh, you know okay. what I mean? Okay. Yeah. You, you, you transferred the energy. <laughs> Holy into, into, fuck he's good at that. You made your music. You're the breadwinner, everything that you're doing, a lot of it's about him. Yeah. Bro, I gotta back. That sounded like a fucking edit. That shit was so good. Hold on a second. There are things in the family that had sentimental value more than profit value that should have went to certain family members that they didn't have a chance to get? It, it, it bothers me, but at the same time, you know, their memories in my heart. And I mean, I know, yeah. you know, I know, um, you know, I think I fucked heart. that you know, up. I mean, I know, yeah. You know, I know that things sometimes things aren't like they should bad. be, but you know it'll be okay. Yeah, for sure. Now, would you ever consider buying back his house? Is would that be a possibility? Or he would tell me no. He really? would say, "Don't do that. That's stupid." Because it, as when we lived there, it got flooded three times. Oh, do man. the. It's in a bad flood zone. He would be like, "Don't do that." Yeah. You know, Absolutely. and his his company logo was a job you can crow about. And the logo was a chicken. Now okay. I have a job I can crow about. Uh, you know okay. what I mean? Okay. Yeah. You you you. Here it goes. Transferred the energy. <laughs> <laughs> into 
<laughs> into, oh. into you made your music. That's you a talented winner, chicken call right there. Doing. A lot of it about him. Yeah. Billy Rooster, the album, Chicken Willie, in mm -hmm. the beginning. All the old stuff in the beginning, man. I love it, bro. My love, man. My biggest fear in life is not having a life of any significance. No impact on anyone for the better. Mm -hmm. What's your biggest fear? My biggest fear is not fearing anything. Because when you don't fear nothing, then you're probably My not biggest be fear is having no fear. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's an epic You have answer. to have a that's little bit of fear, brother. That's why okay. when I get a Harley or a crotch rocket or something, and I ride it till I ain't scared of it, that's when that bike will hurt your ass. Oh, man. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. That's I almost true. got a crotch rocket when I was like 19. That's I was about true. to get one. Shoo! And I was driving down the road. It was close to Nashville. It was like a Hearsonville. And I was driving down the road, and there was a wreck. Mm. There, was a, there was a bike here, mm -hmm. and I saw a dude laying about 50 yards from it covered up in a sheet. Mm. And I was just like, should I take that as a, like, them helmets don't do shit at 140. Yeah. And you know yeah. people like us are going to go 140. Bro, them rednecks Facts. hated that gas, baby. Facts. <laughs> and I mean, it's, and I kind of just slowed down on the crotch rocket, man. All right, for a dude who's had a crazy life so far, what is on your bucket list before you transfer your energy? Hmm. <laughs> What is something like, I'm talking about like top tier, epic, hmm. or not epic? Well, let me think. There's a lot of stuff. I want to pick one of them. I want to see another artist get big and be like, my inspiration was up church once upon a time. Ah. I want to live that long. I just want to see it once. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, there cool. was a kid who put a, a comment. I saw a comment on one of your videos. That's a cool goal. My goal is to inspire somebody to achieve great success that they contribute to listening to me. That's fucking cool. I can't remember. It was a couple years ago, and it was uh, um, I, it was it was a song. I can't remember which song. You'll know. Probably it's the one where you said we were we were in the parking lots cranking up Johnny Cash. Old days. Old, old days, okay. Yeah. And so there was a kid with a comment on there. He said, now we're in the parking lots cranking up up church. That's fucking cool. How cool is that? Bro, money can't buy that. I saw that money comment and I was like, family. this kid's awesome. And I was like, that's so that's so cool, man. But It is. I thought, hey, as soon as you said that, I thought of that's that. That's the kind of shit that makes time freeze, bro. Dude. Like, I mean, the Nets, dude, I, I've been to shows and there was one that's time cool. where we had a decent song and, like, we had a few people who was in the local area and, um, in a band that I was in, and they shouted some of the lyrics. And dude, I was like, they know the song, like, bro. It, it makes you feel good in a, in a in a very odd way. It does. It's it's almost like a drug. Yeah. And you're just like, they know my, they you know, they they care about my music. It's it's it's, it's incredible, dude. It's I a hard feeling to describe. I was dude. on stage one time. That happened with Holly Boys. That's the first time it actually happened to that caliber. Yeah. Like a crazy caliber. And I'm seeing it with in ears in. You know what in ears are? Yeah, absolutely. Bro, mine got like 75 drivers in them. <laughs> like I'm sitting there and I can't hear myself sing. Right. I pop one earphone out. I'm like, ain't no fucking way. I stop singing. Everyone is singing every lyric, Everyone and I was like, was whoa, singing. that's, bro. Coach Hills don't yeah. lie, bro. That was wild. Yeah. That's when that's when I knew, and B. Lewis tells me this all the time. We like the fact. What we like about this the most is. We're a part of something that is bigger than us. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's everyone. It, it can't be done by just us. It's everyone involved. And it's, and, and it's necessary. Uh, yeah. And like, it's humbling. You know, it's, it is. Um, if you, cause like you said in the previous question, mm -hmm. if you're not afraid of anything, you don't have any accountability, it's not always good either. Mm -hmm. Cause things fuck up like your ego and you know, Absolutely. how you treat people and shit like that. Yeah. And bro, man, it's just, Dude, you didn't get to where you was by being that way, you know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. And, and so it's, I don't know, bro. Like you said, though, the radio cannot give you what me and Creek Squad and my camp have created. They can't give you that. No way. It's not possible. And, and it's just, it's a special feeling, man. Um, you know, just, just to be involved with something that's, that's because to me, this is, whole, this is a movement. Mm -hmm. It's different. 
and, and that's why I kind of latched on to it. You know, I clean Creek Squad and stuff like that, but I mean, I, I'm my own person, but at the same time, like, it's a movement. It's like a part of you. It's a patch on your vest. Yes, yes, Like, it's yes. a piece of your puzzle. It's a piece of your puzzle, and it's something that's going against the grain. Yeah. And something different, and you can tell. Anybody can tell. Anybody who knows anything about music can tell. Mm -hmm. uh, it lets you know your ideas, are, your ideas and stuff are good, even if... Somebody thinks they're not, bro. It doesn't matter what they think. There's right. 20 other people who are going to agree with you and vice versa. Absolutely. And, and, and man, the underdogs, the underdogs, people are going to find a way to come on top mm -hmm. if they have to. But yeah. we got to watch it right now. Everybody watching this, young artist who's independent, look, in the future, it's going to be harder for you, bro. Because let me tell you something. They are studying what I'm doing. Mac Miller did it for a little bit. There was a lot of people who did it for a long time, but then finally, you know, went to that next level, which is cool, their decision. But that's the point of my career. Uh, another piece that is a point that I'm documenting is what is it like for an artist to be independent and continuously grow from start to a, to the very last breath? Like, no one knows what that's like, bro. No one's done that yet. That's that's so, yeah, that's true. It's it's like a moment in time, like we were talking about earlier. Exactly, bro. So, whilst you got the mainstream hanging around, right, and they're trying to think of ways, how can we capture this person? How can we get them? So that fact about music history doesn't exist. Well, if I keep saying no and just keep doing what I'm doing, there's nothing they can do. They've already fucked up. They can't give me enough money because I already I already went to extreme lengths and fucking got high and bought Lambos and fucking you know <laughs> went to penthouses and done all this crazy shit. Right. It's not as fun as creating the history as you want it right in front of you. Right. That's right. more interesting to me. It, it's 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 a trail untraveled. Yeah. And like you said, bro, that's that's a crazy thought too. Is that there hasn't that's been one person lifespan who was only independent. And they've lived their whole life doing it. Yeah. So you can study it. Right. Like, that's crazy. That's and got crazy. to levels where you're butting heads with actual whole ass fucking record labels and shit, bro. That's that is facts. When he first said it, I was like, wait, a lot of people have stayed independent their whole careers. But I think his point is people that reached my level, um, you know, Obviously not to toot his own horn, but he's a very accomplished, successful artist. So uh, for somebody to get to reach his level independent and then stay independent forever hasn't been done before. Now, it's being done on a few different levels at this point. Um, I think Adam's still independent. Tom McDonald's still independent. Uh, there's some other guys out there. Burden's independent. I think High Res is independent. Um, Bryson Gray's independent. So there's definitely a lot of people out there right now doing their thing. But he is right. No one's gone start to finish without ever taking the check at some point. That's true. That is true. That's, that's insane. Not only that, doesn't have a filter. We'll be like, yo, fuck you because of this reason. And then, but. Then we're like, oh, god damn, no, he's got fucking three million followers. He's saying, fuck you, what do we do? Then they're all calling each other, and then you know you're getting high on the couch watching cops while they're all calling each other being like, how do we control this? Yeah. And it's hilarious. It, it's all some Huckleberry Finn shit, bro. It, it's, it's, it's real outlaw stuff, bro. Yeah. I mean, because, like, for people to think that they have to control people in the beginning is, like, messed up. Yeah. Well, I got, we got Plus, who's really an outlaw? Who, who's really a, a rebellious? Bro, think about this, bro. What other artist, especially, we can't say in our time because I'm the only one. What artist on on this level in in history, who's the only other one who's been seen with actual outlaws, bro? And is not ashamed of it. David Allen Coe. Oh, yeah. Waylon Jennings. Yeah. That's it. But David Allen Coe was a actual outlaw MC, bro. Yeah. Um, I don't think Waylon was, but but that's the thing. A lot of people were like, oh my gosh, like, like why would you do that? Because that's what I grew up around. You me fucking lie to you. If there's any bikers in my shit, they're going to be outlaws now and then until I'm fucking dead because right. that's where I'm from, bro. That That's what I grew up around. And, you know, those are the people that I've learned stuff from, whether anybody, I know everybody gets on the History Channel, they're like, oh my God, 
but what they don't realize is these people actually love this country, and they, from what I've seen, they love their families. They have Thanksgiving together. They take in people around them. They ain't got nowhere to go. Right. They feed them. Like so, unless I mean, I mean, I'm in Middle Tennessee somewhere, bro. Like I I'm not seeing people. this dangerous ass shit that all these people talking about. Right. And and you know even in even around some people who are, who are not great people, some mm. good things still happen. Like you said. Oh yeah. And yeah, man, you you, you got to hang around the outlaws. But that's a PR nightmare. You see what I'm saying? To yeah. mainstream, that, they're like, oh my God. Like, no. Why? What's so what's so scary about being real, bro? You know what I mean? Like they look they Luke Combs. They you know, they, they took Luke and they took him balls and they I want the real deal of everything, bro. So, you know, what I, what could I have done? What what would have mainstream done? We need we need to set up like like a couple biker looking people. Uh, we'll get like custom vests and this yeah. and the other shit that's fucking, you know, not the rules. <laughs> Actors. Yeah. No, I want the real deal, bro. Living life to the fools. In every aspect. Living and life to the fools. Because what they say, real recognize real, so real should show, should show real. Real recognize real. So, kind of a follow up question to that. This is, this is, you may be able to talk about this some, and, and if you don't, I mean, total respect, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. When when you and uh, Jelly Roll yeah. had a conversation, mm -hmm. um, there I'm sure there was st some stuff said about what he was doing, the road he was taking, and the road you were taking, and why, you know. And, and I mean, I'm you, you, you I love both you dudes, man. Total right. respect to Jelly Roll, you. And I'm just wondering, like, kind of what that conversation consisted of, as far as like his reasoning for doing the label and your reasoning for not doing. It was exactly that, just understanding each other. It wasn't gotcha. it wasn't like a I'm right or I'm right, you're wrong, you're wrong. Right. It was more like, hey, we just just need to talk about what it is because it's apparent we don't understand each other all the way. He told me I learned some shit from him. He may have learned some shit that I've said about myself. Right. You know, or like um how do you say that? Like my, my way of thinking about things, I guess. Your perspective. Yeah, my perspective. Yeah. And what matters to me and what don't matter to me may be different from him. Right. But at the end of the day, bro, it's also 615 shit. Absolutely, you know what I mean? man. Yeah, absolutely. Regardless, you know. I Jelly's think a real one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. For sure. And I think rappers, even if they disagree on things, if they're in the same city, they should hold a certain amount of respect for each other for the city for sure. the community. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. You know, you don't want them warring and no, tearing people that's apart. That's a bad example, man. Right, you tearing know? people apart. Of course, we're older now, you know? Right, right. We ain't no young kids on TikTok showing Uzis. And I mean, Jelly did go mainstream. He did sign to a label. From, from my understanding of his deal, it is unlike any other deal any other artist has got. Um, so it is a very unique jelly roll deal, which still allows him, um, significant amount more freedom than I think most people sign to a label. So shout out to him for landing the right deal and blowing up and going big time. He's, uh, he's making moves, which is awesome. And shit, like nobody is. Right, know? right. Walking around the street, trying to fight everybody. Pet dogs and make bonfires. I want to have a good life and, and yeah. have a good time with my family, and my wife, and fighting man, fighting's a young man's game. Until you go on that UFC, let's watch that UFC. Shit, bro. <laughs> Give me in the ring, bro. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. No, but uh, I need three months to train. That's it. Three months. Somebody give this man three months. Let's go. Trainers, trainers. Not, not against, not against real MMA people, but internet people. Yeah, three months. <laughs> <laughs> Tra trainers, hit the comments. So, my wife is biracial. Hey, honey, love you. Mm -hmm. Mixed, black and white. Mm -hmm. She's not a huge fan of country rap. She's very hesitant. She loves, you know, rap, hip hop, whatever. Yeah. But she's she's a country gal with southern mm -hmm. tendencies. Can you give an example of how you've seen a wide range of acceptance into a genre um, and it's nothing but love, even your personal? I think it's, honestly, dude, I, I think it really doesn't have anything to do with 
uh, like skin color or demographic or you know where they're at in the world where they're living or whatever I think now it's to a point of real and fake bro I think people mm. are so sick of seeing fake they just want it they want real mm. and they respect real because like we, like we said a minute ago real recognize real really it used to be you know person recognized flashy now it's real recognize real people want right. the real shit they don't want no fake shit no more right you know I think that's really and that, it also comes to being like a culture a, a, a culture vulture hmm. um you know you can't rap or sing about well since we're talking about rap uh you can't like rap or sing about something you don't know about like it's cool to make up a story and write a song about it and it'd be a great song or whatever but if you're saying if you're from the country Right? And you're rapping, yeah, man, I got, you know, I, I do all this shit, I got all these hoes, and yada, 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 just saying a bunch of shit you have no no idea about. Right. To me, that's where you get no respect, because you are actually being a vulture of what you think you're, you think you're setting the right example for a And those are the actual people that give country rap such a bad taste in the mouth of a lot of people, is the fact that... You know, they put on a John Deere hat and some overalls and put some guitar on the beat and pretend they're a country rap. And, yeah, there's a lot of that trash. Culture when you're not. Right. And you're just saying all the wrong shit, so everybody's like, what the fuck, who's this guy? What is he doing? Like, it, It's almost like, dude, and, 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 and I don't want to say all names, but you, you see it. You see it. Yeah. And, okay. and I see it and stuff, and I mean, I'm like, there's people who put out certain songs, I'm like, he don't do that. Oh, yeah, you, you don't do that in real life, guys. Authenticity. You just heard it from the man. Authenticity is super important, man. Bro, it's key as fuck. And and yeah, and I see it every now and then. And like people will be rapping about, you know, um, you know slap slapping these hoes. Like, yeah, like dude, you're married or you like <laughs> exactly, bro, yeah, exactly. And so, or I got thirty pounds in the trunk. Mm -hmm. No, the fuck you don't. <laughs> you start crying when the cops pull you over and there's a joint in your car. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you buy Kratom from the... <laughs> yeah, you smoke K2, motherfucker. K2, bro. Come on, man. That's hilarious. But yeah, okay, great, great. But and, 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 the, and the biracial thing and then the mixed thing. Oh, bro, yeah. you had, you like, what, Kansas is your bro and Simba has been oh, over yeah. here? Simba's been over here? It's all love. Bro, I've, I've dated a half Puerto Rican, half white chick. For a long know. ass time. Never want, you know, that, that's just not like a thought to me, really. Right. You know what I mean? Like you said... Like, if you if you want to be friends with somebody, if you want to connect with people, you're not looking at skin color. You're looking at real. Nah. You're looking at real fake. And bro, it could be anybody, any from any different culture. If they're real, oh yeah, they're real, bro. Bro, yeah, it's and just it's just Democrat, kind of, Republican. I'm all about vibes, man. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? My wife was the same way. She likes that. She would love that answer. <laughs> She's a very vibey person. Got to be, bro. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome answer. I get crazy random ideas. I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes. I'm driving down the road. I'm working for songs. Right. I just randomly, just like, it's almost like it just pops out of nowhere from something else. Right. When do you get your song ideas? Like, how does that happen? Or do you just go into the studio and... Honestly, bro, this is going to be like so cliche. It's kind of, I live what I'm, I'm going through or have lived hmm. what the song is. Literally. So like or it's an idea of how I see something or how I perceive uh, maybe goals differently or something. Like it's all perception from the person. What I'm seeing is everything in the world. How do you say that? Like how people view like fame and money, right? I yeah. view it differently. How people view uh, who a cool person is to hang out with, I view it differently. Or it's problems or issues I've dealt with and how I dealt with them mm -hmm. and what the outcome was or something like that. So it's almost like your experience. It's all it is. Kind of. In sound. That, I mean, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, from Cheatham County, was right. the name of your album, that's what Cheatham County people Because like, people will be like, oh, that was a great love song. It's like, no, that was, a, that was actually something that actually happened. Ugh. Or, man, dude, this is a... Um, a really sad song. Well, yeah, I, you should have seen my fucking house. It was absolutely destroyed <laughs> when I wrote that type shit. Awesome. So it's like real life experience alone. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Even silver circles happen to a guy. 
bro. I mean, Kansas, bro. Well, oh, yeah. The movie, of course, but, I mean, that's what inspired it. The thing me and Kansas seen, I have no fucking idea what that thing was, bro. I saw that video, dude. That I saw him talking about it. And, it, bro, what we were talking about in the car was weird because we were like, man, I bet these motherfuckers can hear us right now. I wish they would show us a sign that they could hear us. <laughs> and then it literally come out of the trees. I was like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Almost like my camera died. It was scary, bro. Oh, man. Um, I, I've seen things before, bro, and... You know, it, out of all the galaxies and all the universes, it doesn't make sense for us to be alone, right? Mm-hmm. I, mean, it make, it, I mean, let's think about how vast everything is. I don't know about that. I always believed that there were aliens. I think I had my own alien encounter when I was like eight or or so. We definitely seen some weird shit happen. Um, so I always believed in aliens, but now that the government is coming out, um, and saying, oh, look at all the aliens, the aliens are coming, I'm beginning to believe it's bullshit. There has to be something else. Bro, either there's a lot more out there, or we're all one thing collectively. Hmm. That's a crazy thought right mm-hmm. there. Is one the loneliest number, or is it the onlyest number? <laughs> is one the loneliest number, or All right, the so onlyest wrapping it up number. here, kind of ish. <laughs> Do you have any plans for the Creek Squatters out there, like kind of as a whole, or what you're going to be putting out more media, podcasts? Um, I know that you mentioned about you were thinking about making Ghost Ranch into some kind of like hangout every now and then, or something. Working on that right now, bro. Oh yeah? yeah, that's what it is. That's awesome. oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, 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 that's it. That's it. Yeah. So, I want to have like a huge family style reunion. You know what I mean? Oh, that's cool. You know, have jump houses and shit once a year, barbecuing, everybody mm-hmm. hanging out, fishing. You know, shooting guns, all this shit. But I got to figure out the legalities to do it first. Oh yeah. So it doesn't land me in court for, oh well, my kid was there with his dad that wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta figure out that. Building everything I need, not a problem. Legalities of doing it is what I want to do. Cause also I want to be respected by, you know, the town I live in. I, I, I want them to know that, hey, this ain't gonna be loud music all night, causing havoc, yeah. everybody on the ATVs and shit like that. That's not what's gonna happen. It's awesome, bro. You know, I want to be very subtle and like, uh, good for my community. Yeah, most people would. That would be care. dope to go to. Oh, bro, sure. care a lot. And you're, you're you're right because like people, uh, my buddy used to throw parties and like started getting big. He would throw one once once twice a year, and it was called Mustache Bash. Mm. And it was you had to even That's women had to like cool. wear even women had to wear like a big mustache. It was funny. <laughs> it was funny. And That's so hilarious. like it got so started getting so big to where there was like 300 people showed up one time and like. You never know. Somebody might say, Pro, "Yeah, I yeah. tripped over something. I'm suing you." I or fucking hit my head, or somebody beat me up, or it was. I slipped something in my drink. Yeah, anything, bro. Literally anything. But once you get to legalities, of that worked out, that's gonna be sick. Oh, bro. That's gonna I, be I, sick, I, I plan on having it done by 2024. Okay. Okay. I mean, no, 2025. Sorry. 2025. Okay. Yeah, okay. actually, ready to go. Badass. Awesome. Having everything I need. Paperwork. Uh, whatever, everything. Kind of like uh, uh, invite only. <clears throat> and, yeah. And who, yeah. So it'll be extended invite. So like, if I invite you, I'll be like, you can bring X amount of people. Couple people. So it's you know, so everybody's always getting to meet new people instead of knowing the same people every time. Mm-hmm. You know. That's awesome, bro. That's gonna be cool. That's gonna be. I mean, that's almost like another connection, like network. It's almost like I don't want to say a record label, but it's almost like a. A reunion, or like like a um, what do you call it? Like almost like a. Um, it's like a farmers market, bro. But a farmers market, and you, where you can hang out, personal stuff, maybe even music. Who knows? Exactly. Talk to some Grab people. guitars, playing. Fuck, I'm gonna have a studio that's there, so people can go hang out, and make songs with each other, and don't have to pay a gajillion dollars. There you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't have to message each other and not get a message or whatever. Yeah. Hey, Creek Squad's coming up, bro. It's all it is is. Re-implementing family values, bro. Mm. Everybody stop sitting down and eating at a table with each other. Mm. Look at me. I, bar- I don't. Even, I barely even have a family anymore. Yeah. That's when you really realize what are family values, and then when you figure it out. That's definitely one and you thing. See what these certain things up church. I hope up church can find him a nice lady and get him some babies. 
Um, he needs to have a family of his own for sure, especially getting fucked over by his, uh, his blood family so often. Uh, he needs to build one for himself. Do for people <clears throat> such as sitting down at a table and all eating together. That that is something we have to, you know, we should do. Mm -hmm. And in a world where that's disappearing, I want to try to restore it, bro. Even if I'm not successful, I'm gonna try. So Creek Squad family dinner. <laughs> Creek Thanks. Squad family dinner. Who knows how to cook ribs, bro? Creek Squad. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 you know some Creek Squad. Oh good, fuck bro. yeah. You already know I want the okay. invite. Put me on the list now, buddy. I want to go. So I want to go. Um, all right, let me ask you one more question. Then the last question is that okay. So, so two questions. I, I know. I know. There's <laughs> a lot of heat right now that's going on. I know there's a lot of stuff that's happening, bro. And I just want to say, like, you know, it is what it is. And like, you know, I, I just, you know, you see things, and it's, it's inevitable whenever things happen. Sometimes, <laughs> do you see um, a, a resolution? To where, with, 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 I don't want to get personal, but no, with, go ahead. with with your your family, hopefully a resolution, you know, to what's going on right now and how long that would be, or it just depends on what, what happens in the future. I'm going to be completely honest. I've just learned not to care. People's going to want to be around you if they want to and they care about you. People's not going to be around you or care about you, you know, it's one or the other, and as long as you're doing good, and, you know, you're making an effort, or have made an effort a shit ton, if they don't want to give you no effort back, there ain't nothing you particularly can do, right. except for, go put that effort into other people who will give it back to you, yeah. and that's when, actually when happy. But sometimes, sometimes when things are done, they're mm -hmm. done. Yeah. And, and I mean, in, in any relationship in life, and you know, I, I know people, um, well, I, I don't want to say anybody, they're very, 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 very close to me, who they've had to literally, um, because of their family doing things to them, yeah, like severe trauma, they've had to literally just, I have to get away from this. There's mm -hmm. no, like, it's almost like there is no staying in it because it's like, hey, if I stay in it, that person's like that and they're not changing, and so it poisons me. Yeah, and dude, it, it, and I know somebody very close to me who it, it, it has caused them long term damage PTSD. Right. Yeah, and it, it, it it sucks, man. Um, it's not a choice to love somebody; it's a choice to like somebody. That's that's well well said. Well well said. Okay, so I got like one more question, bro. I want to I want to sit here and ask a million questions, but I think we've taken up enough time, my man. Um, one more question, so. Yeah. When people look back at your life and legacy many years from now, what virtues, attributes do you want mostly highlighted? Musical talent, fame, money, love, grit, determination, persistence, or you're down for the little man, or all of that, or if you can think of one particular. When, they, when, when YouTube, if YouTube is still up in 50 years and this is still a free country, Mm -hmm. What do you want people to see when they look up the Pioneer album or the Holler Boys documentary the most? If you pick one, just what what just what do I get? What is the feelings, the energy I get from Ryan Up Church? What are you scared of? Question mark. Don't be scared. Cause like being scared of anything will make you like, I know you're supposed to have fear in things, but never be scared to take one extra step that somebody ain't took. Mm. It'll take 20 of them. Take a thousand. Fuck. Be a pioneer. Be a pioneer. Mm. Exactly. Wow. What an answer. Epic answer. All right, bro. Um, one more question. I lied. Why did you pick me for this interview? Because I uh, watched one of your reactions and... I like how you pause it and actually break down several different aspects of the song and you bring in outside things as well as you're listening to the song like maybe other artists or other times in history mm -hmm. or something like that and you show how things correlate and I think it's because you know you're an artist you've been you've been in the game you you fucking you know you've done shows you know how motherfuckers are so 
you understand it a little different than most people. Awesome, man. Well, I just want to say, man, I can't say thank you enough. Dude, yes, sir. Man. It's been actually really fun. It's, been, it's been cool. It's that's crazy. Creek Squad, baby. That's Creek Squad. Creek, that's Creek Squad. All right, guys. Next time. Next See next you time. take this later. Take this later. Let's go. All right. Well, shout out Ryan Upchurch. Uh, Drew Rippy for doing the video production. Um, and shout out to Southwind for uh, putting that out there for us. That was fantastic. I'm, uh, I'm sure you enjoyed it uh, as much as anybody else. That's a cool opportunity that you had. So good luck to you on the channel and everything's shaking and moving. Looks like your subscribers are going through the roof. So um, I hope it keeps going for you for sure. For sure. That was, uh, that was definitely a good interview. He asked some really good questions. A couple of questions in there that pretty much a lot of people ask. I've seen a, a couple interviews from church, but uh, definitely had some good ones. And it felt more, uh, more of a conversation and a couple Cree squad hanging out, kind of shooting the shit, than like an official interview. So that kind of gives me some pointers. I hope to do some interviews in the future as well uh, with some folks. So that does give me some insights on, um, you know, on processes and ways to ways to go about it. But long, uh, longer live today. I appreciate you guys sticking in there with me. Uh, we usually wrap up at 5.30, but we wanted to make sure we get the whole interview out and uh, do it in one video. I don't like the whole cutting it into multiple parts to try to get you to subscribe and come back. And I mean, it probably works, so I probably should do it, but it just it seems fucking retarded to me. So we got it all in there in one stream. Appreciate you guys stopping by for it. Links down in the description if you want to help support the channel. You can shop McClure's.com. That is the website, shopmcclures.com. We sell quality American products over there. Uh, pick up something that you need or want. Helps out the country. Helps me uh, keep going and uh, making content. YouTube won't pay me anything because they suck. Uh, so we're relying on you guys for support to keep this thing going. So if you want to help out, buy something from the website, hit the donation link, uh, or just like, and subscribe and share that helps too. Uh, I appreciate it guys. Take care and let me know in the comments what we should check out next time. Later, later. Bye.